Welcome to the WAN show, losers. Uh, well, not at least, uh, prob statistically uh, speaking, at least a couple of them are. Uh, okay. Most of you are cool, though. We've got a great show for you today. Lots of great topics. <laughs> the TikTok ban. The TikTok ban is not a TikTok ban. Yeah. It's uh, something much more insidious. Uh, masquerading as a TikTok ban. We're going to be getting into that. Oh, no. The Internet Archive loses a major lawsuit. We're big fans of the Internet Archive, and this is not, this is not cool. What else we got today? AI experts advocate, advocate oh my God. for a you, pause. He scrolled you, all the way down you, the dock. You took all... You can't even say that. Rapid Fire is all the way down the dock. Rapid Fire is on page four, and you took all of the non-Rapid Fire topics, okay? It was a requirement that I scrolled down the dock. I, I just shouldn't even pick topics anymore. I just... I, I enjoyed the time when I just yeeted us into the stream. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Anyways, AI experts advocate pause on high-level AI development. Oh, I really wanted to say something spicy about that right then, but I will wait until later in the show. Also, Dolphin Emulator comes to Steam. Really? You're picking that over the changes to Twitter Blue and legacy verification? I don't care. And Australia debating a mature care. rating for loot boxes? Uh -huh. That's actually kind of sick. That's the only good news. Right. We didn't That's address sweet. the title of the video today. It's all bad news. Yeah. Yep. The show is brought to you today by Zoho One, Grammarly, and Jump Cloud. Why don't we jump right into our first topic, the worst news. To be clear, we're not American, so theoretically this sort of doesn't affect us or something. But we're Canadian, so it also definitely does. Yeah, and, you know, America with its outsized reach in the world. Um, Means it kind of affects everybody. The U.S. government is continuing to debate the Restrict Act, which has been broadly characterized as an attempt to ban TikTok, which, you know, has some merit i guess if you were to look at it from a certain point of view data collection and stuff like it's, that it's you know turning the minds of the youth into sponges or whatever i think of the children argument you might form around that general idea however the language of the act never mentions tiktok directly and is in fact far far broader the Restrict Act proposes to grant the Commerce Department additional investigative and punitive powers regarding all information and telecom companies connected to a foreign adversary if they pose undue and unacceptable risk to U.S. national security or U.S. citizens. Whatever that means. That is very truly broad, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It? That's vague as you could possibly have it. Wow. That's, that's broader than... Um, Barn. I mean, yeah, I was... The broad side of it. Yeah, very broad. Yep. Um, okay. The foreign adversaries included in the act are China, Cuba... Okay, Cuba? Are we like, still, against, not, yeah, are we still against Cuba? Buried this hatchet? I, <laughs> I actually thought they had until you said Cuba, and I okay. read it at the same time. I was like, oh. Iran, <laughs> Russia, and Venezuela, but that list could be expanded in the future. Corporate entities focused on tech that are based out of these countries will face additional scrutiny, including potential fines and total bans. Language targeting third parties that aim aid in the subversion of these penalties has raised concerns that the act may be used to ban VPNs and to fine or even imprison those who use them. Okay, so here's the thing. The problem with legislation, right, is not what they do it's what they write down that they could do and then slowly frog boil over time that's why there's so much concern over this a spokesperson for the primary sponsor of the bill has stated this legislation is aimed squarely at companies like kaspersky huawei and tiktok that create systemic risks to the united states national security not at individual users the threshold for criminal penalty in this bill is incredibly high, too high to ever be concerned with the actions of an individual user of TikTok or a VPN. Now, here's 
The problem with that, and I'm deviating from the script a little bit here, but we had a lot of the same conversations around Bill C-10, which became Bill C-11, which I don't even know what it's called anymore, here in Canada, where they kind of went, oh, well, no, 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 we're never going to like do anything like that. It'll never restrict an individual user's ability to upload. If that's upload. the case, that needs to be written into the law. That's right. Yeah. So, fine, put your money where your mouth is, and if it isn't a concern, then write that sh down. Yeah. The federal governments of the U.S. and Canada, as well as NATO and the EU, have all banned TikTok from official devices on the basis of cybersecurity concerns. More likely, they're just wasting time on it. Um, staff are likewise being advised to remove the app from private devices. France, on the other hand, has simply banned all recreational apps from official devices, rather than TikTok specifically, because I guess the French are just more direct. <laughs> Anywho. One concerned race, to be clear, I'm not, I'm not saying that the way that TikTok, well, ByteDance, the way that TikTok's parent company is collecting information is not mass surveillance of foreign nationals. I am not saying that that's not a thing. I'm just saying that I'm not convinced that TikTok was suddenly what made it a concern. It, it, yeah, it might be, it might be both. Uh, but the concern raised by U.S. officials is, this is back on script, is that the Chinese government could press ByteDance into revealing information for use in state intelligence operations. And while there's no indication that the Chinese government was involved, four employees from ByteDance were fired after using TikTok data to track the location of journalists and cross-reference their location with that of employees suspected of leaking information to the press. Cute. <laughs> Uh, several commentators have criticized singling out TikTok when the majority of American corporations collect massive amounts oh, of data yeah. from American consumers, and the American government has repeatedly been caught buying that information from them. Likewise, TikTok is far from unique in its impact on the mental health of teenagers, another focus of the debate in Congress. All of that seems extremely fair. So, discussion question. Is this a threat to personal liberties or a necessary restriction on foreign intelligence operations? I guess if it was if it was a more trustworthy entity that was saying, "Hey, we really need to stop these foreign governments from spying on our citizens." I'd be like, "All right." I I 100% believe that foreign governments and I say that uh for everyone anywhere if that makes sense. So like if you are China in this situation. Sure, yeah. I would say the exact same words. I 100% believe foreign governments, just place yourself anywhere, the statement's still true, are going to use this type of stuff to gain information on what is going on in your country. We're talking about spy balloons in the U.S. Sure, yep. Do you think the U.S. isn't spying on other people? It's How do it's you happening. know what a spy balloon looks like? It's <laughs> Mine looks Do like a Do you whale. have your own spy uh, balloons? <laughs> yeah, like it's it's happening in both directions. And I'm not yeah. I'm not saying anything about that, but it's basically sieve. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the 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 diplomat gets, you know, caught doing espionage. One of the then, options is to ask them to not do it anymore, and that does nothing in the game if you've played Civ before the the player just gets to decide like do I care about this? Do I kick them out, which by the way also does nothing. Yeah. So like uh, Cool. It is what it is. So, like, uh, it, is there potential that China would use TikTok data to, to gain information? Yeah, sure. Is there potential that, like, U.S. companies might be used to gain companies uh, information from somewhere else? Yeah, sure. I don't know. This is a, a... If I was a person in power for one of these countries, this would be something I would be concerned about. I would not write into my bill that I can, like, super destroy any citizen that happens to use a VPN. Or, or better yet, you could specifically write into your bill that you can't do that. Totally. That might be even better. Yeah. So, like, there's other ways to go around it. I don't think the concern is unfounded, though, is what I'm saying. Absolutely not. And along these same lines, like, if, if the entire impetus for this is data collection, data control, yeah. right? Because that's clearly what has actually started this debate. Um, and we see, we then see stuff. VPN usage is absolutely something that is, even if it's not part of the conversation out in the open, is part of the conversation behind closed doors. Because yeah. while a VPN, and we've, we've made this very clear, is not the be-all and end-all of no. being secure online, it is a tool in your toolbox 
that can increase your anonymity online. It's one of the layers of Swiss cheese. Yes, one of the many, many layers that you should be using if you actually want to achieve any kind of any any kind of anonymity. Sorry, what were you going to say? I think I cut you off there. Uh, we saw like this. This is only tangentially related, but something that's been very interesting in the conflict in Ukraine is seeing the social media usage of both sides and the very direct ramifications of such. Controlling information is like incredibly, insanely valuable. And when people are posting photos or videos or whatever else, it can be super, super bad. Um, data is huge. Even just turning the mic on a device could be a massive advantage. Someone sent me a, a link today to um, a vulnerability. That I don't know if it ended up in the doc or not, but I wanted to kind of mention it because uh, coming off of last week, I just yeah. thought this would be kind of interesting to bring up. But uh, an attack that I heard of a long time ago was the ability to be able to tell what keys were pressed by listening through a microphone. So you have nothing connected to the computer. You yep. just have a microphone in the room. We discussed that on WAN show back when the set was way on the other side of yeah. like the 104 building or something like the that. The problem more recently, I think this was as of, oh man, I don't know because I didn't look into it a ton. I think it's one year, four months, some, somewhere around there, is they just like, not only is it open source, but they like made a website for it. So it's like really easy to do. And a pretty big attack vector for that could, like, the first thing I kind of thought of was like, oh, streamers. Right. Because now you're you're massively, like, yeah, the vulnerability exists, but there's a bunch of vulnerabilities exist that, like, no one really uses. But making yeah. a website where people can use it really easily means that the level required to be able to use it just dropped. Same with, like, cheaters in video games. This is such an interesting conversation and one that we could probably spend the next three and a half hours on. I mean, we did a video on the Flipper Zero this week. I don't know if you know oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Tanner was working on it and it's the kind of device that honestly we could do an entire week's worth of videos on. You could review it as a, as a, uh, as a penetration testing device. You could review it at, from just like a, a, you could put it on channel super fun and review it from a, you know, mischief kind of device. Yeah perspective you could review it as a gaming device i mean it's chock full of games you could you could push the boundaries of it you could go get you know uh, custom add-ons i mean it has gpio pins right you could There's you could review all the different add-ons changed the the displayed price of gas using them so it doesn't actually change the actual price but so we had to kind of decide on an angle because we can't cover it from every possible perspective and what we ultimately settled on was is it a tool or is it a weapon was sort of the the overarching question that we were asking as we made our way through uh, what it is, what it can do and what our position is on it, because there's arguments that you can make either way. On the one hand, sure, let's talk about the gas station price changing, right? So it uses uh, whatever it is, like sub gigahertz band communication, and so it allows you to to sniff and then replicate these commands that are that change the the gas station price. Um, you could kind of look at that and go, well, if your system was so insecure that you're not even using rolling codes, right? Like it's less secure than a garage door opener, which we all know is dog shit in terms of security, right? Um, well, then take it as a wake-up call, right? To harden your security and and update that module from 1973, <laughs> right? That you're that you're using to update the thing. Sure. So you can so you can you can come at it from that perspective because and there's a really good argument to be made here, right? If someone came along with real skills. Not some, you know, whatever the hardware hacking device equivalent of a script kitty is, right? So you, let's call them a hack device kitty, sure. right? So if someone, if someone comes along who really wants to hit you, the fact that that hack kitty came along and beep, 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 changed your sign and forced you to, to harden your security a little bit might actually be a good thing because even if your security is still sort of the best you can do as some boomer gas station owner, um, it's not about necessarily having a perfect lock. It's about having a better lock than your neighbor's door in many cases. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's true. It's not, it's not false. It's, it's like running away from the bear. Well, you don't okay. have to be okay. faster than Hold the bear. On. I'm going to counter this being true actually really quick. Sure. Um, and <laughs> you just got to be faster than the other guy. He's going to be mildly upset. Um, I think pretty soon it's not going to matter at all. 
Like what? There will be enough arms that they'll just catch both of you. There was a demo at um, DEF CON, I don't remember when, where they had a, a circle of servers and they had AI running on the servers and they had like a capture the flag hack contest between all of them and they fought each other automated using AI. And that was a bit ago. The future of cybersecurity using sure. AI is going to be insane. And it, they're, everything's going to be automated. They're going to be hitting everything at the same time. Sure. So if your neighbor and your lock both suck, but yours is better, they're both broken. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. Where I was ultimately getting to here was there's the argument to be made that the wake-up call to harden your security is probably a good thing, even if there's another exploit that someone more skilled could absolutely use to get past right. you. Yeah. And the example that we use is that there's this other... Um, from Great Scott Gadgets, there's this other hacker device that actually can defeat rolling code implementations of the of the gas station sign changer. Um, so even though you, so even though the the uh, the flipper zero can defeat these extremely basic ones, um, and it's it's starting this conversation and it's inconvenient for the owners of these gas stations, it's overall a good thing. At least that conversation starting. And the Flipper Zero is actually specifically designed to not be able to defeat yeah. rolling code ones. So it's more like um, a basic pen testing yeah. doodad and less like a serious hacking device. Which is really good to have in the hands of people because of the reasons you were just talking about. However, yeah. the flip side of that argument is that there is still extremely dangerous things that a ne'er-do-well, or even not a ne'er-do-well, just a particularly committed individual even, could do with a device like that. Even just the gas station one, because like if you own the gas station across yeah. the street and you just keep making theirs look more expensive, like you could cause genuine actual harm well i was talking more in terms of like the way that the flipper zero can be used to access um apartment buildings that have older nfc access systems yeah um and you know for the average prankster so what what they go in they like they tag the mailboxes or something like that it's really inconvenient and unnecessarily costly but if it's in the hands of someone like an ex-husband yeah some stalker um, there's and been a bunch of stalkers and like the and that argument, that argument that like, well, this is a good, it's good that these devices are out there and everywhere because it's the wake up call. We all need to harden our security. But someone who's, who's running away from an abusive relationship and is staying in some, some craptastic apartment building. Might not feel that way. Is not in any position to change the security systems of the apartment building. Yeah. That's actually not within their power in any way. And now these, these tools are everywhere. And so it's kind of like what you were saying about this, this keyboard tool. It's like on the one hand, yeah, it's good that we're raising the profile of, uh, of these attack vectors so that people are more mindful of them. But on the other hand, even though you're right, that was an attack vector that already existed, just like the changing gas stations thing could have been done for 10 bucks, totally. you know, 15 years ago with some part off of Amazon. Laptop and, and some hardware. The rolling yeah. code one's been defeated for six years by that Great Scott Gadgets one or whatever. Um, just because these vectors have existed for a long time doesn't mean that they're in the hands of, like, your jackass, you know, ex-husband. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so there's a... By the way, if, if streamers are freaking out about the password thing, and if yeah. you do have to type in passwords on stream, the, the thing that I've thought of so far that I think is the most hilarious to defeat this, um, and I, I like going with the, the rule of cool, yeah. um, is make a, make a stream deck thing, assuming you have one. That's a big assumption. Oh, well. Um, you can make some soundboard or whatever. Make some type of way to mute your microphone and play a recorded sound and just record yourself typing in something that's, like, funny. Yeah. And then use that, type in your password, and then hopefully it ends and unmutes you soon enough. And I th it just, like, like screw off whatever. Just have yeah. that be what's typed in. I think it would be entertaining. But. I, think that's, I think that's expecting a lot. It is. And not being able to type in passwords on stream is crazy. And, like, some people are going to be like, oh, like, you shouldn't do that anyways. I don't mean having it on well, screen. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows you shouldn't. But, but people are going to stream for 13 hours, and they're probably going to have to type in a password to something. Looking at you, XQC. <laughs> yeah but like for real like he might have to sign into something at some point so like i actually think and it's been out for a while this isn't new or anything but just 
thought I should bring it up because I I wasn't personally aware that there was like a site for this and the usability just went through the roof. Um, Sec it guy says this conversation is pissing me off. You can buy PCB printers right now. You are arguing against advancement. If they're motivated enough, they will get in. That's actually not true, though. It's a sec IT guy, but yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, know. Oh, I, was, I was just, I was just, just messing like with that. him? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's actually not true. I mean, in the bubble that you presumably live in, um, maybe every single person you know would be capable of defeating some kind of I building just, yeah, building this, security systems this might be true with just like stuff that they buy off of you know out of fruit and amazon or whatever right maybe that's true but in the broader world like just that that jerk stalker that you went to high school with like is probably just like a, not probably but is possibly just a slack jawed idiot that no could never figure that out this in is, a thousand years would never figure it out there's even similar uh conversations with hardware locks the, the main reason why i'm yeah. bringing this up is just because there's there's often this situation um where like people that are into software don't trust software locks and people that are into hardware uh, like they don't trust software locks, so they want hardware locks, and the people that are into hardware don't trust hardware locks, so they want software locks, and it's like, blah. Stuff like access to bump keys and high-quality lockpicks and everything has never been anywhere close to how it is now. Um, like the the prevalence of security tools for pen testing, yeah, but also being able to get through some aged systems has never been quite as common. Um, and that's why I think I, I've also never heard as many people talking about like Swiss cheese style security approaches, right? Um, and home security and stuff like that is because we are we are in like a relatively sketchy time when it comes to that type of stuff. Yeah, and so like again, so you'll you'll see in the Flipper Zero video, we ultimately make the argument that the existence of the Flipper Zero is a net positive, but it's also important for us to consider that the widespread availability of these tools, uh, whether be they software or be they hardware, or some combination of the two, uh, is not necessary. It, it seems like a good thing until you're the one with a stalker who broke into your apartment. Yeah. And did it with something that they bought for 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, yeah. When 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they would have had to go and build up the skill set to craft it themselves, which they probably wouldn't have done because as we've as we've seen with security Difficulty levels are extremely important. So coming back to it not being necessarily important to have the best lock, but to have a better lock than your neighbor. Looking at the uh, security footage that we've had of people breaking into things sometimes, um it's very clear that it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's whatever's fastest most of the time. And while it's true that if someone is determined enough, they will get into whatever, most just flyby theft um, or random vandalism is not determined enough. It just it, it, it's impulsive, right? So you're you're taking a very a very rational state of mind that that you're in a very calculating state of mind that you might be in, and you're applying it to people who are not necessarily planning long term, right? Like you look at you know think about the, there's this entire category crimes of passion, right? A, a crime of passion doesn't happen over a span of 19 months as someone you know reads up on electronics engineering and PCB design. And you know, micro, reactionary. yeah, m micro, microprocessor, you know, control. Like it's, I, that that's not how that works. Whereas if someone can just get drunk, you know, drop down to the local Best Buy, pick up some tool that is going to give them, you know, easy access to someone, and that it's like, yeah, bad. it's all theoretically good that these pen testing tools are out there until it's, you know your relative or you it's like oh yeah it's good for everyone else i guess right so it's tough it's tough man i don't have the right i don't have the answers yeah i'm just saying it's not black and white yeah anyways cool <laughs> I think that was all the first discussion question. Uh, what is the second one? 
Nah, we can move on. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, all the topics today are going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> There's only like one that has an upside, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll keep going. Are we talking about Internet Archive now? Sure, I can go for it. Starting in 2020, four large book publishers sued the Internet Archive over its decision to lift its user cap on digital lending as an emergency response to global library closures. Late last week, a judge ruled in favor of the publishers. The plaintiffs include Penguin Random House. Hatchet and HarperCollins, the three largest traditional publishers in the world. I was going to say, I recognize all of these. The fourth is academic publisher John Wiley and Sons, who I assume were just happy to be included. That was editorial. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, though, I could see an academic publisher being uh, very interested in this because piracy of academic. Yeah, well, they try uh, to charge for all their papers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, like... so piracy of that stuff is like, huge by the way it's pretty common if you figure out who the author of an academic paper is and you email them they will often send it to you for free i did not know that yeah oh that's kind of cool it's like definitely something you can take advantage of and something i have literally done from my personal non-work email so they like didn't i wasn't trying to like use my clout to figure it out it's a good hack yeah it's they a lot of these people want to share this information but it has to go through these publishing companies that uh want to loot so yeah. Anyways, uh, the Internet Archive offers an extensive range of scanned books on the basis of controlled digital lending, or CDL, a system where libraries can lend out as many digital copies of a book as it has physical copies sitting in storage. Many publishers sell ebooks to libraries at a significant markup, typically around 250%, while others refuse to sell ebooks to libraries at all. CDL has been used as a legal rationale for over a decade, allowing libraries to buy and scan books that otherwise would be unavailable in digital format. The ruling doesn't just punish Internet Archive for lifting its lending caps. It also describes CDL as a violation of copyright and form of theft, which has potential ramifications for libraries throughout the U.S., depending on fines levied. It could also threaten other Internet Archive projects like the Wayback Machine which I am certain you have seen not only on the WAN show a bunch of times, but also in LTT content, because it is insanely useful. So important. The Internet Archive says that it plans to appeal the decision. This sucks. Sure does. I, like, don't even know where to start. It just sucks a lot. The, the loss of libraries is going to be... A horrible thing and libraries are super cool and a lot of libraries have been adapting in super cool ways but libraries aren't profitable luke they're not yeah yeah so why should we have them kind of like by design they're not why profitable. should i pay for libraries what did they ever do for me <laughs> if the people can't i've see... already read every book i want to read so why should i pay for libraries anymore <laughs> It, it reminds me i, I know if I other people want a it, library they should it, build their own <laughs> library and they should pay for it <laughs> some people have done that have you seen the like uh what are they called little libraries free little libraries those are super those? cool yeah those are wicked yeah the people will do like it looks like a almost a big mailbox with a glass front if that's fair to say or like a birdhouse with a glass front yeah uh and you'll just be like driving down a street and you'll see it's at the end of someone's driveway and it it is like a, a little library it'll have, it'll have a couple of shelves and it has books on the shelves and you can just take whatever you want and ideally theoretically you you bring it back or maybe you donate some to the little library super super cool systems uh, but libraries are awesome um, and we also need larger libraries though because yeah. those little libraries are not going to have things like a microfiche archives of newspapers um they're not i mean they're not going to have they're not going to be able to manage digital lending um, yeah and the newspaper thing like this is why we have the wayback machine like it's it's helpful to be able to look back at what happened and even if you don't think like the, the 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 subject of history in school is the most interesting thing i sure didn't i have been in a bunch of different situations in my life literally one time i found myself at the vancouver library going through their newspaper stack thing that you're literally describing now trying to figure something out this has happened this does happen to people it's important for journalism and it's important for people's um 
ability to do things sometimes because you need to know how we got to where we are now um to be able to help inform how you get to the next step this just it's just so so many different aspects of this just suck and like i i appreciated that the internet archive was trying to step up when there was a insane amount of global library closures um yeah and i do appreciate that um <sighs> Copyright holders do need to protect their rights, um, yeah, I, but yeah. not selling to libraries is not protecting your rights. That's just being a jerk. And um, uh, it just sucks. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Other than that, yeah, this 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 does just suck. You know, it's a funny thing because I can't really figure out what the what the benefit is to the traditional publisher model anymore. Like uh, Yvonne has this app that she uses to read all the time, and people just uh, they just upload stories, and a lot of the time you you'll actually it's more like a tip system or like a microtransaction system. So you'll you'll read the first chapter, and then if you want to read the next chapter, it's like however many tokens, which. I, I actually really do not like that it's tokens instead of actual yeah, money. You lost me when we got to that part. Yeah, but <laughs> overall, the idea of just um, of people just self-publishing on a platform. I don't. And this this like is like I just. Why do you need a? This is definitely out of ignorance. But the yeah, biggest one that too. I don't understand is for music. Th that one is so weird to me. I watched an interview recently with a musician talking about how they made they made one song. That was just like a massive hit and they're like yeah it was great because i was with so and so whatever publisher and now that has done so well that i don't need a publisher anymore and i'm like well it's a whole who you know thing right like i, I mean okay so here's something that so okay the the abcs of gaming we we self-published it because i could afford to do a production run of like thousands tens of thousands of books yeah but you're not you know people aren't buying cds anymore well, okay. Well, uh, but no, I'm pretty sure people still buy CDs. No, for real though. Yeah, I, I know. I <laughs> the look on your face. No, really though. Is it like an appreciable amount of like? Okay, sure, people buy records too. But like, is it? Yeah. A, is it appreciable amount of your sales? No, like, I, is I, it going to make or break this situation? No, I, I do think people buy CDs. What? I, I look. I know. What do they play them in? <laughs> it's CD players. What? <laughs> I know. I know. Where do you buy those? <laughs> When's the last time you saw a CD player in like Best Buy? What is this? Am I crazy? Is this a thing? CDs are definitely still sold. <sighs> CDs are the new vinyl? I hope that's not true. There's no way. Dude, our generation okay. is so cringe sometimes. Hold on Co a second. Come on. Hold on a second. <sighs> Why is it any less cringe than vinyl? Let me let me let me come at it with the exact same arguments. <laughs> I like to hold the physical thing as part of the experience. I, I like feel, to put. Oh, but, but, I I'm feel not myself done yet. losing this argument already. I like to put it in the thing, and it spins, and it's mechanical, and it comes with the artwork, and you can appreciate the artwork, and you can put it on display. Okay. And get this, it's so much more compact than a vinyl record. It's right in the name. It's a compact, compact disc. disc. <laughs> that was good. Um, and and I honestly, I felt myself immediately lose that argument because I want physical copies of games so that I own them. Yeah. And if you have music streaming services, if you have movie streaming services, whatever, you don't own it, they can take it anytime. So, okay, cool. Buy your CDs, whatever. But I'm surprised that's a significant amount of sales no, is what I'm trying to get It's at. a thing, man. It's a thing. Yeah. Like, again, it comes down to our bubbles, right? Even, okay, hold on. Even in that interview with that musician, he was talking about how many times it got streamed. Sure, yeah, because streams are the major metric now. But don't okay, especially if you have a song. But but uh, Taylor Swift is selling a lot of albums. She's selling CDs. Yeah, sure. See, this is what I was talking about. We're like and it's probably coming albums. from ignorance because like I have no idea. Yeah, but I you're like you're like you're industry. like IT sec guy over here, <laughs> right? Where where it's you're you're living in your bubble. I guess so. You yeah. and everyone you know has thought what has anyone bought a CD since the closure of A and B Sound? Okay, but you if, know, but for, like, if for I real and everyone I know which is a decent range of people that are not in the IT industry. Not that many. One. 
I know one. But you gotta remember, it's like the, <laughs> maybe it, maybe maybe my friend group is not. <laughs> this is like it's like Heisen the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Oh no! You by observing someone could change the outcome. Yeah, fair. The very fact that you know them at all could change their behavior. Yeah. Because they would they would unwrap their new CD in front of you and show it to you all proud of how shiny it is, and, like, and you'd heck? be like, "Are you a f***ing idiot? <laughs> I can't believe you actually spent real money I can't on this. Believe you've done this. Did you get it for free? And even then, why didn't you immediately throw it in the garbage? Just digitize it right away. Exactly. So no, we gotta get ourselves out of our bubbles sometimes and realize that there is a great big world out there full of people who are still buying CDs. Like I think it wasn't it only a year or two ago that millennials overtook boomers as the largest remaining demographic. Oh, are we are we that group now? I didn't even know that. Like Oof. for real though. It's the end game, boys. And, he, and here's like here's another thing, okay? Uh, man. Okay, I remember going to my high school reunion, and so this was this was a while back, right? Because oh, I didn't even bother. I graduated in Facebook exists. I graduated in two thousand. So oh, so okay. So it was in it was in the mid twenty tens. Okay, so this is this is already like seven eight years ago, something like that, right? Okay, so seven eight years ago, I mean, would you have considered buying a CD? Would you have would you have not. would you have bought, you know, a, a programming book for dummies or would you just go on YouTube? Right. Like actually the world was pretty similar to today, I think is pretty fair to say. Yeah. Seven or eight years ago, I did have books for programming, though. Yeah. But did you buy them? I did. OK. No, I don't. I mean, did you buy them seven, eight years ago, or did oh, you just still own them? I still own them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that long before that, but you are being specific, so okay, sounds good. Sure. And would you have considered buying a CD? Yeah, probably not. Okay. So I technically. Oh, and it's from the one person. No, I have. Okay, I received a CD for Christmas around that exact amount of time ago, but it's from the one person that I just mentioned. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to my high school reunion for a second here. I completely here. forgot about it. It's sitting in the glove box in my car. Probably between <laughs> 60 and 100 people showed up. Pretty good turnout, actually. Oh, to high yeah, school not reunion. bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to be, like, you know, like, uh, like I, I didn't... If people asked what I was doing, I answered. But I wasn't going to walk up to people and be like... Yeah, I'm like, you know, running a, you know, YouTube company, you know, I have a million subscribers or whatever. Like I didn't I didn't want it to be like that. Um yeah, it, I, gets, it gets pretty douchey pretty fast when yeah, you start. Yeah, yeah, like I I just I was I I went out of my way to say nothing. I would just ask people about themselves. That was it. I, that was like my was rule there, for the was night. Was there any intention of of leading people to ask you the question or just nope. no? Okay. No, no, I, I actually just didn't want it to be because it's it's honestly weird for me when I when I interact with people who I know otherwise and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, you're on YouTube. Yeah. And, then, and then that's all they want to talk about. Yep. I hate it. And what I actually honest. wanted to talk about was like, how are you doing? Yeah. And like, remember that time? Especially right? if you know them through like some like say say you met someone playing badminton. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And they knew you as like a good badminton player that they liked playing against to test right. their skills or whatever. Sure. And then suddenly they figure it out. Now you're not the skilled badminton player. You're now the YouTuber. And yeah. it's like and it changes the dynamic and then they're going to ask me about, you know, YouTube and And like it doesn't really matter, but no. it changes the dynamic like you said. Yeah. It shifts the it, and like it's supposed to be about this thing yes. that we did together, not this other thing that I happened to do. Yes. Separate. So that this. was my yeah. that was my that was my whole jam. Um However, I will say that at the end of the night, I was surprised that nobody knew. Not one. As in, so like, because I'm assuming people asked you about what you do like, at hey, some yeah, point. Hey, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, but every single time they didn't know that you had done it. 
Interesting. That's actually pretty surprising. Which, and if you if you think about that, this is in. So this oh, is. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand the point you're trying to prove now. So I am a, I am a well into the Linus Media Group era. Yeah. This is post NCIX. We're here already, right? Uh yeah. Yep. Just barely, but we are here. Just barely. Yeah. But we're we're like in this building. We're like yeah. we're popping off. Yeah. We're definitely full swing at that point. And yeah. not one of them out of, it was probably closer to a hundred people was like, oh yeah, I like know that. And I'm kind of sitting here going, huh. huh. World's a little bigger maybe than I thought. And you know what? So, so, and, and it's like, it's the, it's the experience that I still have today. If I go to Best Buy, yeah, people know who I am. Right. Context stuff. But. I, okay, so for, for, for a shoot uh, recently, we were, we were going around to, um, uh, we ended up using a, a farm as a location, okay? And the, the, the people that worked there, one of the people that worked there, made an offhand comment like, yeah, I never really go on the internet. Never mind, I don't know who you, a tech YouTuber, are. Never mind, I don't use YouTube. I don't go on the internet. That is a thing. Yeah. Not everybody lives on Reddit. Yeah. I've been trying to do it less. It's been great, actually. Like I'm I'm saying that completely unironically. It's been it's been better. Sometimes sometimes I have to like recognize that the the bubble that is the internet, as weird as that sounds to say, kinda sucks in some ways. It's fantastic in other ways. But like you shouldn't necessarily be submerged in this all the time. No. Like there is a whole world out there yeah. of people who fax purchase orders yep. and call each other on the telephone. And sometimes those things and listen to music plastic music discs. Yeah. It's I know, it's mind blowing, right? Weird. It is a little mind blowing to me that people buy physical CDs still. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that that's still blowing my mind a little bit. But yeah. I do I do get it and I kind of sympathize with it. I actually had the thought recently. I've talked a couple times on Wancho about how I was doing this. There was a bunch of spring cleaning going on in my house. Yeah. And I did a bunch of archiving and like making sure all the hard drives that were on shelves were actually backed up properly, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I found my old like music folder and nice. I had the thought of like, you know, in like ten years, Google Music is gonna forget that I listened to any of the stuff I'm listening to now. And I'm going to forget what it was called because I don't remember the names of the songs. Yeah, you're very so much like me that way. just going like, to be gone. Yep. And it's if like, I want to go back and like reminisce everything I listened to in 2020. Because like sometimes I'll get tired of songs or bands or whatever. Yeah. But if I can remember the name going back a few years later, it's like, yeah, these are bangers. Fort Minor. Fort Minor. Is that a band? Oh, I, I thought you might get the reference. No, uh, they have a they have a, a a fairly famous song. Remember the name? Oh. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, carry on. Is this Sorry. like a top forty thing? No, I, no, not top forty. Oh, I'm no. actually surprised. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, okay. Chat gets it. Luke doesn't know Fort Minor. What? <laughs> so I I don't know. My music tastes are ten percent luck, twenty percent skill, fifteen yeah. percent. Okay, that's the song. Oh, okay. But, yeah, I don't. I don't know what? names of this stuff. Okay, dude. but you know the song, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that that's remember the name. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, but the issue here is that I don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people will ask me about like actors or actresses, and I'll be like, I have literally no idea who you're talking about. Then they'll be like, this person in this film. I'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty hot. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's George Clooney, right? It's it's good, okay, that's good. <laughs> shit. I was trying to think of the guy who plays Thor, but I don't remember his name either. That's not George Clooney. No, I know, but that's we both went the same kind of direction. Yeah. is what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just, yeah, no, you're good. Um, anywho, <laughs> where where were we? Where were we with this? Bit? Maybe we should maybe we should move on, Dan. All right, now's the point in the show where we tell you guys. <laughs> The way to message in is not to send a super chat over on YouTube. Um, oh, wow. Well, yeah. Most of you are like, oh, man, see, see, I, I, once again, people, people, I saw, I was called out on Reddit again recently for lying about oh. YouTube super chats being broken. Blah, blah, lying, blah, blah, blah. No, they're just broken. I Here mean, are some super chats. Google has. Like, Here is me it. not being able to read them. Sweet, um, yeah. So sorry to. I mean, even if even if 
Even if they weren't broken, we, we don't want to use them anyways. Anyway, the way to write into the show is not Super Chats, not Twitch Bits. It's merch messages. So if you head over to lttstore.com in the checkout, there will be a field for a merch message. It'll go to our producer, Dan. Beep, beep. There he is. No. Oh, sorry. I missed the wave. Sorry, I missed it again. Nope, missed it. All right, cool. It'll go to our producer, Dan, uh, who will either curate it to pop up here or curate it for us to talk about or he'll reply to you. Super cool. And if we don't do any of that stuff, then, hey, at least you get your order in the mail, get some high-quality merchandise. I do think we have a couple LTT store things to talk about this week. Holy crap. Okay, yeah, we have quite a few things to talk about this week. Mm -hmm. We finally have a mystery waffle skew. Um, that'll be more clear what exactly oh, it is once yeah, I have the site up. If you like the waffle shirt, but you don't care what color you get, you can get a mystery waffle long sleeve at a discount. And check I'm this out. Option. We're selling rack studs. Rack studs. Rack studs. So you can pick up a super comfy waffle shirt and also some rack studs. These are You can install awesome. those rack studs in your new shirt. These are so much better than traditional, um... Man, I forget what this cage nuts. That's what they're called. So they're plastic. They're super quick to install. Uh, you don't have to have any tools or fight with them to get them in and out of the rack. Um, and they are shockingly strong. So we are we are an official reseller of rack studs. They had a whole issue where we did a video recently where we featured the product. And because of some of the complications around working with sellers like big sellers that until recently were run by bald people. Um, <laughs> not, nothing against bald people. Love bald people. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, that, that, particular, that particular seller yeah. can be pretty challenging to deal with. They're not all um, the same. What happened was they, got, they went out of stock like immediately after we called them out in the video and they had no way to refill their stock. So they just completely lost the benefit of the wave of traffic that oh. we sent at them because we were like, yo, these things are super cool. You should buy some. And then they just <laughs> were like, no! <laughs> ah! um, so the solution is that we're just going to carry them. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Nice. Rack studs. So we've got the duo, and then we've also got the, I, I don't know, I guess it's called the, the okay, normal. Series called 2. Rack studs. Series 2, I think. Yeah, sure. Cool. So check them out. I actually have a bunch of rack studs at my house that are like the wrong one. I need to get some rack studs, so I'm going to have to like get them. All the wording around all this is just amazing. Oh, sorry. I guess I'm, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so different thicknesses, uh, different pack sizes. So you can add those to your cart and say goodbye to cage nuts. This is super cool. Oh, for those of you who are wondering, we are still working on that like phase change thermal pad thing. I believe oh. we've found a supplier. And then the only challenge is that they come in sheets that are like this big. And those are, I, I don't think most people are going to spend hundreds of dollars on like a giant sheet of it. I mean, is, someone will. Is that what you but not very want? Many, yeah, nah, not, not, ma not many people. Yeah. Uh, so what we're trying to figure out, because it's a Honeywell product, right? Uh, Honeywell doesn't give two shits about us. We're, they're not, if we're like, hey, um, so that's a really big sheet. Could you, <laughs> could you retool your thing to make a smaller sheet? Um, that would be great. Thanks. <laughs> they didn't even reply to our emails. <laughs> <laughs> like our outreach emails. We're, we're in touch with the distributor now, though. Oh, boy. So we're just trying to figure out, A, um, the order quantity, because it's like it's not cheap, and B, how to package and sell these things. But that is going to come to LTD Store as well. I also have an update for you guys on the carabiner situation for the yeah. LTT backpack. Dan, could I trouble you to man the camera? Manra. Kamanra. Okay. I actually don't remember exactly what the last update we gave you guys was, but this is definitely new stuff. So, Luke, you're going to be my test monkey. Yeah, yes. It's going to be exciting. Okay. In I've front of you before. is... Dan, you got this, I believe. Thank you. Okay, you might want to yeah, give, her, give her a little more zoom. We're, we're on Luke's hands here. All right, okay. cool. So, you're going to be our test monkey. In front of you is a zipper. That's yeah. a that's one of the flawed uh, carabiner designs that we are we are recalling. So this one's still in good condition, but I'm assuming that I am a person who wants to swap it anyways. Yes. Yeah. Because you are you don't like that it might fail at some point. Yeah. 
in your hands is the tool for removing it, safely removing it. This thing. Yep. The goal was to create a tool set and instructions that pretty much are um, brain dead simple. Like you, you can't break the zipper by changing out the pull. I want to make this very clear. It is not designed for you to just no. fashionably change your zipper pulls all the time. Yeah, you can do this like once. Once. That is, the num that is the number of times to do this. All right, back to the loop cam. So can you figure out how to use that tool to change so the... I, so I don't get the instructions. Yeah, I'm I'm just, just, I just want to see if you can figure it out. Yeah, going for it. Test okay. monkey. Okay, well, I think the tool goes in there because you can see on the actual zipper bit. I saw Tyna do this, but I honestly wasn't paying that much attention. Um, there's like a part where it doesn't fully connect in here. So I'm going to try to lift that up. I just bent something. I bent it back though, it's okay. <laughs> oh good. I'm not 100% sure how this goes. Maybe it's like this? No. Tynan is screaming right now. Oh, Why I'm don't sure. you just tell me what to do? No, Tynan is saying no hints at all. No hints at all, why? That's hilarious. Okay. Is that enough? Did I just do it? I might've just done it. Yes. Oh, okay. I think I was done immediately and just didn't realize it. I should have tested it. So all I had to do was put the tool in and then turn it. And it was... Uh, Dan, you can stay close. I'll go back to the It was just actually it. so easy to do that I don't think I realized it was done. Yeah, so the idea was that we wanted these tools to be small and inexpensive enough that we could ship them to tens of thousands of people um, without wasting any yeah, more right. materials than we absolutely have to and while making it quick enough that it can be user serviceable. That was very easy. And then to, to put it back on... So, so the removal tool is pretty much final. Because it's basically just a little Allen it's key. A, it's a bent thing, and you turn it once, and then yes. you're done. The re-tightening uh, tool, that I have clearly been is... been told this is not final because it's way too big. Yes, and expensive. Yeah. And so we need to kind of solve that. So then I'm going to put the new zipper, which like looks all actually super cool and stuff. Maybe we'll get a zoom in later. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put it on, which is easy enough now. And then I'm assuming you just mash... Yeah, cool. Okay. So that's the process. Um, Seems to work. Well, we're still working on on a on a on an inexpensive way. I was actually inspired by Der Bauer's delitting tools. And I've asked the guys to explore some kind of maybe you could take the key that you used to remove it. And you could use that to tighten a thing that sits like a little injection molded plastic thing that sits over top of the zipper and it would press it shut or something like that. Um, so that's a possibility. They're exploring that. They've got a couple of other ideas as Is well. Is it like super Dan, you're not done yet, sorry. to just ask people to like, oh no, because you wouldn't have this strip. It would be attached to the bag. Yes. Yeah. And the challenge with that is that we don't want people to scuff the finish, right? So I could tell them, yeah, just grab a pair of needle nose pliers and go to town. And that would work. But that sucks, right? That's not a good user experience. And the reality is that most of these haven't failed in the field. Yeah. There's some, there's some manufacturing tolerances. Some of them are really bad and fail like immediately. Very few. Most of them are still fine. So we've got time. We've got time for, to figure this out and create a system that's pretty good. Yeah. So let's take a closer look at some of our... Whoopsie daisies. There we go. Let's take a closer look at some of our options here. That's uh, one of our replacement carabiner options. It's uh, titanium. The cost is not low. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you play around with it, it has no moving parts. So it has just like a, yeah, there you go. It has just like this. Man, so is that not, all the zoom we got? It's Here. not like a pin on a hinge. It's actually just how yeah. it's like. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get this a little closer to Dan. Is this, is this going to work? Maybe. So we've got like this. Um, yeah, that's. Okay. I don't even know how to describe this, but it's like. Not ribbed, but herringbone. it's kind of cut on both sides. Yeah, Dan's calling it herringbone. I don't know. The point is that it makes it more likely to bend in that spot. And the reality of it is that it's going to bend. Like, I could, I, could, I could bend this wrong or whatever, but it's titanium. And so as long as I'm not a complete idiot and doing it all the time, 
I could bend it back. Bend it back. And it, it's going to have some, like, maximum tolerance, because, like, everything does. But yes. you just saw him bend it quite a bit out of position, and it just went right back. Yeah, so just be, like, not a big dum-dum, and we should be fine. Uh, one thing that we're going to change if we go ahead with this particular design is right now they're quite tall compared to the original ones. We're going to try and shorten it a little bit to get it more in line with the original carabiners. Now, we're not necessarily settled on this exact configuration and color, and Tynan has actually been playing around, so let's go back to Luke, with some, like, I don't know what he's doing with these things, but he managed to color them. Yeah. So he's anodizing them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he, so these are these are this is kind of uh, that sounds a lot more like play than work. <laughs> um, this is called the stone wash anodizing test. Oh, okay. I think they look amazing. To be completely I think honest, that looks super cool. It doesn't really match the black bag, but maybe for like a future no, version of the bag. I with think colors. it kind of could though, because basically everything matches black. And then if you got a series of similarly mm -hmm. colored ones, which he does have, like if I wanted, okay, I want the accent theme of my bag to be Dan. Don't forget that purple. there's a lower third, so you got to go a little lower. If I wanted and the accent theme of my bag to be purple, I could go with these. These are all purple. Yeah. Look at the purple and black. Okay, well. I, I'm not promising that it we're going to do good. any kinds of options like that. Oh. Remember, these are a warranty replacement part. <laughs> these are not... Oh, yeah, no, this would have to be... There's no way we're anodizing okay. the free ones we're sending out. Well, I don't... I that's hope. why I'm saying I don't know why he's testing this. I don't know. Stuff just gets, like, left here, and then we're supposed to talk about it. Okay, well, what, what else is there for us to show? There is also the shiny anodized ones. Okay, we can have a look I'm at the shiny I'm kind of one. particular to the stone wash. Uh, whoops, whoops, whoops. But whoops, the whoops. shiny ones are quite cool as well. Yeah, those shiny ones are pretty sick. Oh, that, why do I keep clicking the wrong thing here? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, those are pretty sick. If we could get shiny and not colorful, I think that would probably be the way that we'd go on just the stock stock standard ones. You don't, you don't like that finish? Uh, it's okay. I'd like to go a little shinier than this if I can. Because I want to get pretty close to the original, right? The, the idea is that they bought a particular thing. The original one pretty shiny? Expecting Let's... that it would be like that, and then it's not like that anymore. Okay. Yeah. They're pretty similar. Well, we're getting right. there. We're getting yeah. there. Yeah. The point is that this is an update. For those of you who have the backpack, we're actually making a lot of progress, even though an update. it must feel very, very slow. Product uh, development. <laughs> all right. Thanks, yeah. Dan. I think that's good. Uh, people are asking if we would sell these independently. Well, that's what I was saying. If you d that's No. Okay. And the reason is that we don't want people opening up the zipper. It's not designed for that. Oh, but like Dan was talking about using one on his jacket or something. Like you wouldn't have to sell these for the LTT bag. Yeah, but people would put it on the LTT bag. And then they would break the LTT bag. And then that's my problem now. <laughs> because they wouldn't tell me they broke the LTT bag. They would tell me it just broke. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know. The customer account would have an order for new zippers on it. Are yeah. new backpacks shipping with the new zippers? Uh, not yet. Oh. Okay. So, we're, we're, we're still developing. I mean, that's... Um, if we made... So, my issue here is that if we made it too cool, like, it's not the kind of thing where we're going to do, like, a stonewash series, and then we're going to do, like, a shiny series. And then we're going to do a whale version. Because I don't want people swapping out the bloody zippers Dude, on their bag all the time. Whale blue zippers, though, would be so sick. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, the, the anodized ones you have there. You zippers! Yeah. I mean, those ones technically are, like, hand anodized. So they're, like, super fun artisanal, rainbow zippers. artisanal rainbow zippers. And They sell themselves. And what's really cool is that because we're developing these tools, this little kit for YKK zippers, yeah, nothing would prevent you from like putting a cool carabiner pole on your- Why do you want your... to sell these? Because- They're sweet! Because there's a huge liability. Yeah, okay, there's huge liabilities in like repairing uh... things, and you're pro-repair. Yeah, but Are I'm you not a repair Are you anti-modification now? I'm talking to the same person who painted a heat sink on a motherboard and wrote along the traces with UV ink on his graphics card, and now you don't want people to be able to do user replaceable zippers? No, I'm not saying Where that. Where is this coming that from, was, bro? That was my- my GPU and I'm more and this than, is their bag yeah right but then if they come back to me and say well it's broken now lol yeah if you went back to GPU manufacturer and said well it's broken now lol yeah well upset. then I shouldn't do that right yeah maybe avoids your warranty uh, well yeah 
Okay. But yeah, but I'm not going to be the provider of a product that voids your bloody warranty. That doesn't seem very smart. Why not? Well, because it's a first-party product. If Apple sold a case for the iPhone that voided your f***ing iPhone warranty, Dude, if we'd Apple, rip them apart! If Apple sold a case for the iPhone that you could swap out the back and it went into, like, uh, what is what is that N64 model, the translucent purple one? It, it has, like, a specific name. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. If it, it was, that would be sick. Yeah, but Apple's never gonna do that. Yeah, because Apple's lame. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, okay. Uh, the, they would also, like, cost way too much. I mean, I think uh, they we would could do a kit a for, like, 20 bucks. With zippers? With zippers, no. With the poles, yeah. With, like, four poles. Ah, uh, four poles is a lot. We could do two poles for, like, fourteen ninety nine. Oh, 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 this is a pole, That's a, a zipper. zipper pole. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so you'd have four poles and the kit. Would you be able to buy them without the kit? Like, say, um, say you bought a kit, and you're like, well, I don't need this tool and this tool again, because I already have them. I'd say probably not, because the, the cost of the tools is going to be so negligible, and the cost of maintaining separate SKUs. Multiple SKUs. Yeah, I, I, yeah, well, with that said, we're actually working on a system, which you know, we're working on a system where people will be able to buy individual bits and create their own pack. So we're working on a price break system where if you buy 10 bits, 20 or 50, I think it is. I can't remember what the exact I think price correct. breaks are. Uh, but you can just mix and match and build your own kit. And then we're working on, with our, uh, with our distribution partner, the ability for them to create these custom kits, hopefully without too many errors. Oh, we're going to see how it goes. We might just backtrack on the whole thing. Um, Would you ever consider releasing a product like a backpack? I'm not going to do the poll because you're all going to agree with me, and it's actually not really like fair. Um, <laughs> and so I'm, you're saying I'm so unpopular that no, it is no, unfair no, no. to poll. What, <laughs> what I'm saying is that people are always going to vote this way because they're not going to carry your concerns. So I'm trying to actually defend right. your argument here. All right. Well, thank you. Because I appreciate they, they're not going to because care up about... until now you've been very unhelpful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was I going to say? Would you consider, like, uh, releasing a backpack with with swappable zippers in mind? Um, that would hurt. Okay, no. you probably couldn't go with YKK then, I right, guess. Right, exactly. Okay. And that's why we wouldn't do it. That's fair. Um, there's it's, it's one of those things where even if there was a zipper brand that was as good as YKK, uh, one of our uh, things you can rely on is that when you buy a product from us, Unless there is, unless they offer absolutely no option, which I don't know that we've ever run into. They offer a lot of options. Yeah. We use YKK zippers. Yeah. Which, are they the best? I don't know. Maybe not necessarily. But what they are is consistent. They're very consistent. Pretty darn okay. Every product I've had that has had a YKK zipper on it, the zippers never broke. So, um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to break that up. I, I, I don't need that disruption in, yeah, no, in that messaging. Is that, that seems pretty fair to me. Yeah, is that we just, we just don't, we don't f*** around, right? We, it, I'm not if, doing a poll. I already told you guys why. I'm not yeah, doing a poll. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not, we're not going to do it. We're just going to keep using YKK zippers, and we'll, we'll do our best with it. Now, the reason we were able to do custom pulls in the first place is because the, the zipper itself doesn't necessarily have the pull. You can bend it into place once. It is designed for that, but that's supposed to be one time. You're not supposed to bend it back and then back and back and back and back. back. Um, so uh, encouraging people to do that, I think, is encouraging the wrong behaviors. I'm not anti-modification. I'm not anti-repair. What I am is anti-taking something that is explicitly designed to be closed one time and encouraging. encouraging people to swap it out as a fashion statement when it wasn't broken. No, please. Please, no. Please, no! <laughs> um... When is Linus going to address the mark on his arm? It's a well, it's it's like a, a faded um, spray on tattoo yeah. that my daughter did for me. Um, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. If someone's a parent and you see a partially washed away tattoo, I guarantee you that's exactly what it is. Uh, we do have a few other things that we need to kind of talk about here. Ooh, this is unfortunate. I see that I've been asked to do a poll for which design. Um, you guys are most into from the LTX exclusive desk pad designs. 
but unfortunately, I don't actually see any links to the pictures. So hopefully someone is watching and can get me links to those. Um, and we'll get a poll up for you guys because we're trying to figure out what our order split should be. Also, we've heard you. I know this is a really long LTT store update. Maybe we'll break it up in a little bit here. But uh, we have heard you. Um, you're really upset about the LTX designs being in-person only. Oh. We want to create exclusivity for the people who take the time to go to LTX. But we also understand that it's not as simple as, well, I just couldn't take the time. It, some, it, maybe it just was totally, unaf expensive. totally unaffordable. Or you had some kind of obligation that made it so you absolutely couldn't be there. So what I think we're leaning towards right now is having some LTX digital experience available on Floatplane and making LTX exclusive merch available on Floatplane. That last bit? is or two float plane subscribers rather more complicated than you might immediately be aware of but we're looking into it oh have we, i just committed we, a thing that is hard it's hard we can do it uh there's just actually like a lot of steps involved can you do it in two and a half months i mean conrad just turned something around in like three days that i'm not going to mention so like probably hey conrad <laughs> yeah. guess what <laughs> no he already knows yeah okay all yeah. right cool yeah. so the float plane ltx digital experience or whatever is i don't know if it's going to be like a one-time charge i don't know if it's going to be included in a basic subscription i don't know if it's going to be included at a higher tier we haven't settled any of that stuff yet because putting on an event like ltx is shockingly expensive i got the i got the uh <laughs> internet agreement from jake today oh um and I, I i'm pretty sure that our contract probably stipulates we can't disclose the numbers uh but I, what i will tell you is that it is well into five figures for two days of not that fast internet event internet is just a racket it's completely corrupt oh yeah it's kind of like that issue you had with that apartment building that you were looking at where uh shaw had signed yeah. an exclusive agreement with the building so that telus could not bring their their fiber lines in everyone in the building had to buy through shaw so many event uh facilities have an exclusive agreement with one internet provider which as you can imagine leads that internet provider to gr give great competitive rates to it's, the it's actually insane like you can you can't say the price, but you can probably tell me this. Those two days of internet, yeah, the amount of internet that you're receiving, I'm sure it would have been cheaper to buy probably multiple years worth if it wasn't at this convention. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no question. Like, it's not even sort of close. No. no your it scale makes, goes from two days to many years, probably. It it's makes like, no sense. And you end up in these just ridiculous conversations where, you know, they'll go, oh, well, we kind of because <clears throat> uh, oh <laughs> they bill wi-fi completely separately from wired oh, cool. and so you know as tech savvy people we kind of went okay well would we'll anything prevent us our... from plugging an access point into the wired and they're like um well actually you might not understand it but everything's configured on very specific channels and placements and i'm kind of sitting here going we booked the whole building just because you're configured on a channel doesn't mean you're actually broadcast or it doesn't mean you're actually transmitting jack right so if your access points are sitting there idle on a channel that's actually not a problem for me <laughs> i can put as many access points as i want on my own channels and i could distribute them however i want now we're not going to do that because it is against the terms of service and ah. we are good boys but tech for technical but they gave <sighs> us this technical explanation that actually doesn't make any sense because there's plenty of spectrum when it isn't being used because we're the only ones in the building and we didn't book your Wi-Fi. <laughs> By the way, I might have an idea. Oh, I'm, I'm jumping back to LTT store just for a second. Oh, oh, we're going to be back to LTT store for longer than a second. But yeah, tell me more. This looks like a potentially modifiable without compromising the integrity of the zipper zipper. I believe you could attach cool things to that. Oh, that's designed for like a little Including fabric like thing. Literally though. this carabiner. Oh, it would be enormous. It, it could go right on it'd it. It'd be like this long. It could go right on it though. Yeah, it that's already too long. Like this it's one unpleasant. Could go on it. 
I put that I put that one on my backpack and it sucked. This oh wait. Okay, that's the that's the the biggest one we have. Yeah. But the smaller one can go on it too. Any one that doesn't completely it's close. It's the length. The length is the issue. This is way too long. And so when you're adding that thing to it, you're really not giving yourself yeah, a lot of options. Yeah, but you can options. have smaller versions is what I'm saying. The, 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 I'm not talking uh, like this exact yeah, thing. Yeah, no, 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 it'd be kind of janky. I'm just saying. It'd be janky. It's not, it's not, it's not like y, it's, you're sticking to YKK thing. I'd rather do nothing than do something janky. <laughs> okay. Um, That's a very new approach. <laughs> <laughs> on the store. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's fair. When That's your fair. minimum order quantity for literally anything is a thousand units... That does complicate things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can't just be like, oh, you sure. <laughs> it doesn't work that way anymore. <laughs> because if I'm stuck with a bunch of crap I can't sell, like what? Well, think about the waste, oh, too. Man. Think about the waste. We don't want to just generate waste. That is true. Yeah. That I am pretty against. Not worth it. It's not worth quick. it. Okay. Um, Back to the dock. Okay. Right. Uh, Nick had in here if, you, if you've seen any other non LTT designed <laughs> products you'd like to see us carry uh let us know maybe just like uh contact support i think they're not completely overwhelmed right now so you could contact LTT store support um i want us to do i think i already mentioned this to nick and honestly he probably told me something uh smart and informative and my brain just forgot but i want us to do i want us to take the you know stainless steel internal design thing of our water bottles and make uh shakers that don't end up like stinking because of protein oh because the plastics will like absorb they all stink they all smell really bad oh interesting so like stainless steel shakers are totally a thing i think i think we had this conversation he's probably like oh this 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 dummy um but i don't fully remember because my brain is fried yeah we could try and figure out something like that also i have an update for you guys that steam deck carry bag thing that ah. we showed off last week there's now an official ltt forum um post for it so you guys can go ahead and give us any feedback that you have on that uh riley posted it in comic sans <laughs> okay uh thanks riley that's really helpful anyway it's uh it's this thing okay so it's from last week's show but if you guys can give us any feedback that would be great and then the last thing is actually not something on the show you know what let's do a couple merch messages and then I want to talk about paid reviews. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am navigating a moral quandary here. Oh. Around paid reviews. Okay, but first. First, Dan, do you want to hit us with a couple merch messages? Three merch messages. Three merch messages specifically that I can do. First one up is from Jack. Suppose an employee has an idea for a product that they believe LTT Labs or Creator Warehouse could improve upon. Is there an official way to submit their idea to be considered for future attention? Um, official way? I don't technically think so, but internally we've always been open to those types of conversations. I assume they mean officially internally. I mean email? Yeah. Like, Teams message? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we've been open to those conversations. I don't think there is like a documented this is what you do procedure for yeah, I mean, doing Maybe that. there should be. I maybe there should. But, but like, but yeah. Just, it's a, people just like email me random stuff all the time. Yeah. What, yeah. That's kind of what I'm trying to get. At. It's not It's not like those conversations don't happen. Yeah. But like we don't have like a f internal form to fill out or no, yeah, anything like that. No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Next up is from Ryan. Uh, hey, LLD, I'm a trucker that listens to WAN show on Mondays. I prefer so. DLL personally, but yeah. Yeah, it's a computer thing. Uh, I'm a trucker that <laughs> listens to WAN show on Mondays. So hopefully I'll get to uh, hear uh, you talk about me in the future. Huh. What tech item would you like to disassemble if you had no restrictions mm. at all? Oh, what do you want to take apart? Um, I, okay, the first thing that popped into my, our mind, uh, to, into my mind is our metal 3D printer. That we had oh. to, we had to sign an agreement that we wouldn't take it apart in order to get it. Um, like, oh, there's, that makes you want to do it so bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I want to do it so bad. <laughs> yep, yep. That's pretty good. Um, I take a lot of things apart, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I recently had to take apart. So, uh, someone in my household. Uh, okay, that narrows it down a fair bit. 
<laughs> there's still two, but <laughs> but yeah. Um, Not naming any names, but there's a 50% chance I'll get it right if I guess. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be able to tell from his reaction if I've got it anyway. Yeah. They they cooked the power <laughs> they cooked the power cable to uh, the Vitamix. Oh, on the stovetop. Was able to get it off the stovetop, whatever. But it it cooked into the cable enough that it was like I probably shouldn't use this anymore. Yeah, that, you know? that I I think I know who that was. Cool. Carry on. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Um, and I fixed it recently. Yeah. I didn't do it for like a long time because like whatever. But I did fix it recently and I took it apart. And man, that thing is annoying to take apart. And there's no... They sell like the replacement... Mm, maybe it's not them. Maybe I bought it from someone else. I don't know. But there's a replacement cord, which sure. worked great. Um, and is like good quality, all that kind of stuff. I liked it. But, oh, geez, that was, that was quite an annoying procedure. But it was kind of interesting to see how they get it done. I don't know. Um... But yeah, I just disassemble things. I don't really... The, like, no restrictions thing. I didn't know about the restriction on that. Everything else, as far as I'm concerned, like... Well, like, the cost, knowing that you would have to destructively disassemble something, maybe there's something you wouldn't disassemble. I think that's a realm that I have not been cheap in. I think we right. finally found one. Wow, if that's I, fair. If I feel like I need to disassemble something, I just do it. Yeah. MRI machine? I feel like there wouldn't even be that much you'd be able to see with the naked eye. Yeah, but just the fun of it. Yeah, I guess. Sure. All I right. Don't anything about, isn't it just a giant magnet? Hit me, Dan. I don't know anything about it. All right. Uh, up next is from Marshall. Linus, what gym bag do you currently use? I need something to hold me over until you bring yours to market, and I know you will be doing a long time off. <laughs> Dan, you really do have a creative way of reading these. Uh, they're hard. Uh, I use an ancient Yonex badminton bag from like 1989 or something like that that I inherited from my in-laws. I thought it was cool. They weren't playing. And I was like, can I use this? And then I literally never gave it back. I can confirm it's the same one. Yep. That it has always been. Yep. Um, it's fine. I have sewn it back together twice. <laughs> But I, I, I love it. It's like uh, it's so oh, it's so old and crappy that it's not crappy anymore. Now it's like vintage, um, and I, I get comments on it because even the Yonex logo is it's not the same oh, as their current logo. It's that's like cool. some ancient logo that that's they haven't cool. used in a vi in like probably the lifetime of some people who work here. So it's yeah, I I, I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. I I think we should do a gym bag at some point. I have a Hayabusa gym bag. However, I don't have a lot of feedback to give on what makes a great gym bag other than, you know, probably some mesh, uh, probably a spot for us to put our little air circulation device if we ever actually release it. I would want, uh, I haven't seen this in, in gym bags personally. I'm sure someone's be like, this one has it. How didn't you know? I have not shopped around for gym bags. Uh, I would want a divider because of like a, a dirty clothes barrier. Because there's a decent amount, mm. amount of time where there's like a change room. And if you're a sweaty boy or girl or whatever else, you might want to change after you do your physical activity. And that means you have like sweaty, gross clothes. And being able to put that in, hmm, being able to put that in a divided area that has a vent that has a zipper panel over it so you could decide yeah. for it to not be vented. And more of like a waterproof lining instead yeah. of like a like a fabric so it lining. Won't, it, so it won't absorb anything. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you could decide if you want it to vented. So like if you're outside, you can have it vented. But if you have to like drive home for half an hour and you don't want it to like reek in your car, you can just close the panel. Okay, that'd be kind of cool. That would be sweet. That seems like the kind of thing that has to exist. I feel like it probably does. I haven't seen it. Um, and my bag doesn't have it, but like, I don't know. Someone says Under Armour bags have it. Um, so yeah, it's the kind of thing where we'd probably have to go buy some buy some competing yeah. bags and kind of see how everyone does their thing and see if there's anything that we think we could do better. All right. Let's talk about paid reviews. We yeah. have a very clear stance on our channels that you cannot pay for uh, an opinion. Yeah. That's sort of, that's, that's, I think, the most succinct way that I could draw a line in the sand. Um, you can pay for airtime. Sure. For your talking points. We'll showcase your thing. But we will make it very clear that those are well, your talking points. Yeah, and there's some we won't say. 
Of course. Yeah. We won't say anything that we don't in good faith and to our to the best of our ability believe to be true. Yeah. Um and we will make it clear when there is your talking points versus our opinion. You can never buy an opinion. Um now, obviously, you know, I think you guys have probably seen many creators talk about this in the past. Uh, I don't think I've talked about it in quite a long time, but there's, there's many brands and many creators who treat the line between paid content and editorial content um, as either blurry or non-existent. Um, that'll, that'll never happen here. However the reason that I'm in a bit of a moral dilemma is that we've been learning a lot more about marketing because while it's great that we can, you know, create cool products like that desk pad, enjoy it, James K, um, or the backpack or that great underwear Jason W is about to, about to be wearing. Um, Ooh, now I'm picturing Jason W in that underwear. Anyway, Ooh. the point is we can create these great products. Nice. We can tell you guys about them, but if we wanted to take creator warehouse from, you know, a brand that makes merch to a brand that creates products for sale to the, the, the general public, we need to figure out marketing, right? Other than just using our own channels to communicate about our products. And as we're learning more about it, we are learning just how things appear to work. Okay. So... Let me ask you this. Okay. We have, uh, this was actually, this was prompted by something really cool. Uh, in Frameworks promotional video announcing the Framework 16, their upcoming gaming hey, laptop. We're going to yeah. something there. Yeah, the LTT backpack made a, made a casual appearance, yeah. which got a couple thousand upvotes on r slash Linus Tech Tips. Pretty cool. Sweet. Um, that all that all happened organically. No money changed place, changed hands. We just they asked for a backpack, and we were like, okay. And then they they used it for that, which is which is super cool. But what we're discovering is that that doesn't really happen that much. Um, Organic stuff. I mean, I, I've called us out for doing it on the show, right? Like, it happens. Oh no, I just mean okay. So I'm talking about um, in marketing the backpack. So uh, what we're learning is that there's a lot of pay to play. Affiliate revenue is huge. So, so right, this was what sparked the discussion, though, was we were looking at um, the inclusion in Frameworks promotional video and just sort of talking about, okay, you know, what have we seen you know, marketing-wise? What are some of the strategies? Um, and then one of the other things that prompted it was uh, Yvonne was looking into uh, pool cleaning robots. And we've all seen these articles, right? Um, How's the pool coming along? Just gonna say, oh, I don't is it gonna talk be ready for it. summer? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so so we've all seen these articles. I'm gonna go past the sponsored ones, and I'm not singling out the spruce, but you know this article where there's a bunch of. No, it's not me. Mine's like. Sorry about that phone interference, guys. Where there's there's a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, there's a bunch of stock imagery or product page imagery. They clearly didn't um, actually test every single one of these. Um, actually, this one looks like they actually have their own pictures. Okay, cool. So shout out the Spruce, maybe, maybe, for actually reviewing these things. But the one that Yvonne came across was using all imagery from like Getty images. Oh, these are super common. Yeah, too. just like stock and, images of pools. And I know I, I'm, I'm this guy, but uh, a bunch of them these days are AI generated. Yes. And so what we're, what we're learning is that basically the only way to end up on one of these lists is ah. to offer, okay, is to offer some kind of uh, affiliate revenue, which to be clear, affiliate revenue is not a bad thing. What's bad is the completely pay to play nature yes. of a lot of what we're seeing. Yeah. Now, this is where things get even more complicated. In exploring ways to promote the backpack outside of the traditional LTT audience, we've come across creators, individual creators, who will kind of say, okay, yeah, I, I basically, I'm not going to touch anything that doesn't have an affiliate program associated with it, and I expect a flat fee for inclusion in the first place. Now... 
some of the creators that we've encountered, I mean, we have no way of knowing. Don't disclose. But from what we can tell, don't appear to disclose these payments. So tell me this. This is the moral quandary. Are you okay with us engaging the services of such a person? No. It, I'm not done yet. Okay. If our contract stipulates that everything they needs to, to be disclose. disclosed. See, you got to no. let me finish. Really? My reason is because you almost add more credibility to that person. Hmm. And you add more credibility to the videos where they don't disclose. Because now it looks like they would. All right. So then, I yeah, I don't I don't like it. I wouldn't touch that. Okay. So what about the listicles? So let's forget the pay to play. What about the ones that are basically just the like yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch it if there's no affiliate program. The listicles. Yep. Are a little bit more kind of open about that. It's it seems pretty obvious to not me. Not all of them. Okay. Then I wouldn't work with those. Okay. A lot of the time, it's not that simple. A lot of the time, it's more like you submit your affiliate program to an affiliate program. Um, what would I call this? Like, uh, I, I don't know, Commission Junction is one of them. But it's like an official uh, affiliate it's a, program. It's a grouping of websites. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not a grouping of websites necessarily, but uh, um, ah, Amalgamator, not a, something, something Aider. Congregator, something, uh, whatever. I, I'm missing. Aggregator. I, aggregator. Thank you. Why couldn't I find that word? I'm getting old and stupid. Um, so Aren't it'll, it'll be like an affiliate program aggregator or like marketplace. Sure. You can't control oh, okay. who is going to use your affiliate program. So like the bounty program through Twitch, that type of thing. Exactly. Okay. So I'm not necessarily in control of what sites. Or, uh, like, I don't even know, right? Because you've got individuals that might run 40 websites. Bagcomparison.com. Bagcomparisoncheck.com. Bagsforflights.com. Whatever. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how well do you think those websites work? Have you guys looked into that? Incredibly well. Yeah. If we don't, basically, that's how it works. That's how it works these days. If we do not participate in affiliate programs, we can we will pretty much expect everyone other than our only friends, audience sales. like Snazzy Labs. Mm. Well, no, we won't get only audience sales because we'll get word of mouth, which we do. The backpack is still moving very well. Um, but if we want to break into the mainstream, the people who type, what's the best bag for day trips on Google? That's where they end up period. And if we want to have any kind of foothold in that space, that's how it works. Period. So what is that? So what is that? There's someone in Flowplane chat that mean? says, I have some of those websites. They work really well. Um, See, this is, this is, it's like, this, this is. Can you ask one of those aggregates for a like integrity report almost? No. Nope. I mean, I look, I'm assuming, but no. I don't actually know that for sure. How on earth would they manage that? And here's the other follow-up question. Why would they do that? Why would they care? They don't. Mm, I don't think you can necessarily say that. Because if you look at, if you look at like manufacturing around the world for almost anything, yeah. there's a range, right? There's, the, there's one end of the range where it like just straight up uses slave labor or child labor or, yep. or materials or whatever in, in super, super negative, super bad ways. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where it's like all super above board. And you can ask like, why would they care? And it's like, yeah, some companies don't. And they will 100% go full pin as far as they can into sure. evil practices. But they're not an aggregator. And some companies do. Right, but like that's... There might be an aggregator that does care about those things. Um, Luke, you're being super naive right now. I doubt it. I don't think I am. Uh, you okay. can say I am. Yeah. I, don't, I don't necessarily think... I'm not surprised that, yeah, sure, the majority of them don't. I don't know everything about the space. I don't think the only way to interface with this is through aggregators. Uh, I'm sure it's not. It, it might be the easiest way. It yeah. might be the most normal way, but you don't have to take that path. And I don't think that accepting that is is 
required well, or fair. Here's the thing, though. Why do you think we're talking to individual creators and finding out how they work? Exactly. Which because is why we're trying. I'm saying this. Because we're trying to go around it. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is the end result. Okay. So then don't do it. So then don't do an affiliate program. If there isn't an option to do uh -huh. things above board, don't do things below board. Well, hold on a second. Why am I not above board? Because you're working. This sure. is this is the same the same thing that I just described. Sure. Working with people on that end is using that end. Sure, but so then we shouldn't offer an affiliate program. If you're like, hey, I need protection yeah. for my building. There's yeah. this company who tries their best to like, you know, have some people out watching around, taking care of things, putting alarms on stuff. Right, having but hold on, that's and still then there's hypothetical. this other company that just kills everyone that's well, around the building. Hold on a second. You shouldn't work with the other company. Hold on. That's still a hypothetical company though. Okay. So if that company does I mean, doesn't... sort of. There's working with the mob to gain security for your building. Right, but hold on a second. Not. <laughs> Can we back up? So you've still got this hypothetical aggregator that does, what What did you call it? Like a, an integrity well, no, report? What I'm saying is, if yeah. that doesn't exist, sure. don't work with them. Okay. So then we should go find individual sort of outlets. If possible. And we should engage with them directly. If Are possible. you trying to kill our accounting department? Then don't do it. So don't do any affiliate program. I then. don't think you should work with sure. people who lie and cheat. But the aggregator doesn't lie or cheat. But they work with people that do. Mm-hmm. So then they might as well. I see. I don't think, in my opinion, there is not a difference in that at all. So I should, I should just... Because like, if you're a clothing company and you put logos on shirts, uh -huh. you don't make the shirts, but the shirts are made in sweatshops. You're selling shirts that are made in sweatshops. I see, but I am, but you've got my position in this transaction reversed. So I'm the fact, I'm the manufacturer the with the integrity. Sure. Ultimately, it's a good product. Why should I care how people end up with it? That doesn't work, in my opinion. That doesn't work at all. Why not? Because you're still working with people that are lying and cheating. It doesn't matter what mm -hmm. part in the chain they exist in. That's completely irrelevant. So then, so I should just... You can move yourself in the chain if you want. So you make things well. You make yep. things with, with good labor, with good materials, all that type of stuff. Sure, and disclosures. And then you are trying to get people into the store. The people that you use to get, into the, to get people into your store are evil. And you're like, that's fine. That's but not fine. Are they? If you don't know... So you know, say the aggregator is evil. You're saying that you are finding a lot of these sites that don't have disclosure. Yeah. You're saying that none of them will do integrity reports. So you're saying there's probably a pretty much guarantee so, that they're oh, I'm working not saying with sites that. that are not good. I'm not saying that they don't do integrity reports. I'm saying probably not. Okay. Because so why would they care? let's assume that they don't. How is that their problem? How is it not their problem? Well, how is it their problem? What do you mean? I mean, like, so is it the bank's problem if someone withdraws money and then uses it for criminal activity? Like, what, how, what, they're, all they are is an intermediary. That, is it the, I don't is think it that the BitTorrent protocol's problem that people use it for piracy? I mean, no. So I, I, I actually that don't make follow any you. any sense. That argument doesn't hold water at all. This is not what's happening. You just tried to say this is the wrong part of the chain. That's also the wrong part of the chain. What? You're, what you're trying to say is like, if someone uses our bag and puts bricks in it and beats someone with it, is it our fault? Yeah, no, yeah, that's not, not what we're talking about in the slightest. So what we're talking about is that if we create an affiliate program, which will enable legitimate full disclosure publications to benefit from an affiliate program for our bag, which allows us to market it, then because someone will be crappy and not disclose it, we should not do that? Yes. In Why? I don't, I don't follow. Because you know they're going to do it in bad faith and you shouldn't support that. Okay. I mean, you can disagree with me and do it anyways. That's I mean, fine. likely, yeah, because sure. what are we going to not have an affiliate program? Like I we think you we could can't have a different style. We can't what what different style? I don't know. I don't know the space. Are we gonna write four dollar checks to like every site on the internet that you talks have about a minimum? Bags? That's pretty obvious. That's everyone. Well, does. yeah, but that's why nobody does it directly because they're not gonna meet those minimums. They don't want five hundred four dollar checks. That's why nobody does it that way. It's not practical. It doesn't make any sense. I 
am not agreeing with, uh, I'm not disagreeing with you. That's right. literally how I just told you it works. So like, yeah. Right. Okay. So then, so you're basically just saying, okay, then give up. I don't think right. that you should use personally, and again, you don't have to agree sure. with this and you can do it anyways. Yeah. Personally, I don't think that you should just say there isn't a good solution for us to do this ethically, so we're just going to do it anyways. But there is a solution for us to do it ethically. I don't ethically. agree. We are fully disclosing everything that we are doing. We're being completely ab above board. But you know you're working with partners that are going to lie and cheat. And so, okay. Do I? And so... I think thinking that's not going to happen. That's you're like saying, saying we shouldn't build hammers because someone will get hurt someone with it. I don't know. That is literally it, not... Yes, it is. All we're doing is engaging a platform that allows people to legitimately use it and also allows people to not legitimately use it. We cannot control that. And integrity checks, like, what are you even talking about? You want them to police the entire internet and make sure these links aren't posted anywhere that it's not properly disclosed? Who would do that? If you were running those sites and someone, if you were running this aggregator yeah. thing and sure. someone submitted to you, like, look, this, this site that's using your thing, yeah is not disclosing that any of this is going on. Yeah. Would you stop working with them or no? But I don't run the aggregator. Okay. And I can That's tell fine. you that we're, they don't care. We're going care. nowhere, and I don't think there's a point in continuing the conversation. I think we should just move on to something else. All right. So anyway, the situation is, when it comes to affiliate marketing, it's really... It's a it's super gray field. Sketchier than I thought. Yeah. And I get a lot of emails from companies asking for paid reviews. Um, I don't even actually monitor the inbox anymore, and I still end up getting emails uh, from people asking for paid reviews without any kind of requirements of disclosure. I mean, I've generally taken the approach that I can't change the entire world. Um, all I can do is make sure that what we do within the the, the small circle of influence that I managed to maintain is above board. Um, from my point of view, if we are above board in terms of disclosing that we are offering affiliate programs, that we are on you know, platforms X, Y, or Z, um, you know, if, if, okay, yeah, in, in, sure, if one of those platforms was found to be Issue, writing checks to you know some terrorist organization or something like that that runs a network of beg review sites to help fund illicit activities or whatever. Like at the end of the day, anyone supporting you know uh, a, an organized crime uh, syndicate or something like that would be in violation of the law. Like if that happened, then yeah, of course we would stop engaging with that particular platform. But yeah, I, I don't I don't know. This is something I'll, you know, I'll have to talk to Nick about. Maybe you'll have to talk to Nick about because you clearly have a very different perspective from mine. I also like, I don't have to agree with everything we do here. And I don't think it's like the worst thing ever or that big of a deal necessarily. It's just my position on it. Sure. I'm getting people in, in chat getting very angry on each side. And I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, guys. And this is what you've got to at least hopefully recognize is I didn't have to tell you any of this. Yeah. We're having and, this and conversation like, out in the open. Almost nobody else would. So like I, I, I don't necessarily want people like jumping to my defense and diving on Linus or anything. I don't think any of that's productive. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know a lot about these affiliate programs. I just think if you, if, yeah, I don't think there's a point in continuing this to be completely honest. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to be, above board with you guys we're trying to talk to you guys about well here's how it works here are the challenges here are where we here's where we share the same perspective here's where we have different perspectives this is the kind of thing that um happens a lot internally doesn't necessarily always happen on the wan show but at least you guys are part of the process i guess i've got a lot of people saying like hey yeah it would it would tarnish my perception of the ltt brand if i saw the bag in one of those lists 
like well, okay but that's also what not even fair talking about? at all because they might just include the bag i have seen versions of yeah. those lists where they have they'll like rank them so they'll have like number one two whatever and some of those things they won't have affiliate codes for and that they might not even like that right because they're not necessarily making money from that but they might do that to help legitimize the list or they might have gotten a flat payment for it or that like you can't you can't just because some product shows up in the list you cannot assume that it was paid to be there so that's not this is why this is one of the reasons why I don't want people just jumping to like really either side because it's it's an interesting world like if there's if everyone agrees that like one product is clearly the best product in a space for for a specific thing but say it's expensive yeah they're still going to put that at like the top but just be like it's expensive if you want another option yep. there's these ones that doesn't mean that that company paid to be at the top that doesn't mean that that company paid to be on that list it's yeah it's there's more to it than that oh hey they're here uh luke do you mind doing up a poll so the three options are zero gravity oh, gaming vancouver and tech dinosaurs <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Uh, we're trying to figure out what ratio to print for these desk pads because the last thing I wanted was for people to end up with their feelings very, very, very hurt because we had three of our designers each come up with creative ideas. These are artist edition uh, desk pads that we're doing as part of LTX. And the last thing I wanted was for one of them to like not sell as well as the other two or something Ooh. and be the last one left on the store. So that's a huge reason why I'm trying to get some idea of the ratio because that can be opaque to the designers. They don't have to know how many we ordered. I just want them to all kind of run out in about well, at the about the same time. Poll. Uh oh. <laughs> it came from a good place. It did. It a hundred percent did. <laughs> I don't know how you do this. This is tough. Um Welp. Pull it anyway. Can we send it anyway? I need okay. to know how many to order. Okay. Um, so what is it? Like, which one do you want to buy? Yeah, which one? Uh, uh, oh, you should probably... Oh, man, you should probably have an option for, like, all because there's going to be okay ridiculous whale people that are like, I have three computers and I'm going to buy each of them. Um, okay, is it up? Uh, okay, guys, do don't do vote do. yet. I got I to gotta show you what the different options look like. So this is Zero Gravity Gaming. All right. And the, the design is just to the edges of the pad here, okay? It's not the, the name and the LTX logo. It's just, it's just the middle part, okay? Then we've got Vancouver, which is much more vibrant in person, by the way. It's really poppy. It looks really great. And then we've got uh, Tech Dinosaurs, which is actually going to be slightly revised. Um, I think this headphone is changing. Um, but there, there's, not, there's not too much changing about any of them. So let's uh, we'll get the results and then hopefully okay all right well actually things are things are not that unevenly split which is yeah it's decently flat pretty nice okay that's good all right so maybe we'll just go like same quantities of each and just not order too many so that they all kind of run out fast or something like that this is something that like it's going to be limited so yeah all right what are we talking about now oh holy crap we should do our sponsors. Oh, no. What are you doing? You're this getting is, papers again. This is what it is forever onwards now. Is it actually? Oh, yes. boy. This is, this is how it works now. Get used to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, the show is brought to you by, and d do you wait for me to say, and then you... That's right. As long as you do them in order, I'll be happy, but uh, I can work with you. The show is brought to you by Zoho One. Thank you, Zoho One, for sponsoring today's WAN show. This is a strawberry. And if you want a strawberry to cover your business's buttocks, you need Zoho One. Multiple cloud apps, legacy tools, paper-based processes, no! 
you can replace them with a single operating system. This will simplify your operations and help establish your brand across marketing channels. The system also offers pre-built analytics for measuring ROI, and additionally, their account tools can help organize finances, manage bills and expenses, and monitor your business's financial health. Whether it's sales, marketing, finance, analytics, or support, Zoho One has got you covered. Sign up for Zoho One today using the link below and get a free 30-day trial, no credit card required. The show is also brought to you by Grammarly. Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this week's show. Whether you're writing a note for a podcast or emailing your coworker to discuss the next development in tech, what has he written there? Dear Colton, I hope this email finds you well. Blah, 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 something, something, dismissal. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ensuring you have proper communication and tone is key. That's why we recommend checking out Grammarly's premium tone rewrite suggestions feature. Jeff on the business team uses this feature daily as it helps him ensure his writing is coming across as clear and confident. And when he has to communicate around touchy subjects with his boss, <laughs> Grammarly has his back with their positive tone suggestions. <laughs> I like him to arrive on time. That's good. <laughs> Getting started is super easy. All you have to do is install the desktop app, log in, and start typing. So go to Grammarly.com slash WAN to sign up for account. And if you'd like to enhance your writing and tone, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off. Okay. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Jump Cloud. Jump Cloud is an open directory platform. It's kind of like the brain of your organization's technology. What, what the? Oh. <laughs> Okay. What? All right. Okay. Oh, wow. It helps you keep everything organized and secure without spending too much money. It can centralize your technology stack across identity, access, and device management. And now you can easily manage who has access to what and make sure all your devices are working properly. Regardless of OS or location, JumpCloud has got you covered. In the device management tab, you can provide user access, apply policy configurations, or run commands. And you can decrease your IT expenses and ongoing costs while scaling your organization with confidence without massive tech overhead and infrastructure or people. So try Jump Cloud today using the link in the description below. Okay, thank you for that, Dennis. All right, why don't we pick something that we can agree on for a change? For um, a change? I think we're usually on the same side. Uh, Australia debates mature yeah. rating for loot boxes. A proposal by the government of Australia would apply an R rating and 18 plus restriction to video games containing simulated gambling. Games containing paid loot boxes would carry at a minimum a mature rating and 15 plus restriction. It won't be illegal for minors to play these games, but it would be illegal for a minor to buy them. I'd um, say that's going to be much harder to enforce in this day and oh, age. Oh, yeah. It used to be that at the store, at, at the point of sale... Someone was liable for selling the game to a minor. Felt like trying to buy alcohol. <laughs> but now, if you wanted to buy like Halo when you were underage or something. But yeah, if, if you're just digital distribution, it, it relies on parents to set up restrictions, and that's so uncommon. That's another thing too. Back to the bubbles conversation we were having earlier, encountering other parents, just with no tech savvy filter in my interactions. Discord. Are you like the, What's Discord? the parent tech friend for your like the people at I don't have time to be the school? parent yeah, tech okay. friend, but yeah, fair. like, you know, my kid was the first one with a Discord server so that oh. I knew what everyone was talking about and could keep an eye on things. I never even like thought about dealing with Discord. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so imagining that parents are practicing proper I've heard some of the usage statistics on those tools and like they get used. They should keep being made, but it's not that common. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of surprising to me because I would think that you our mean like parental controls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's super easy on a lot of devices. Like Nintendo makes it really simple. I think a lot of people just here, kid, I bought you the thing. Have fun. YOLO. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and anyways. Especially with, man, with like the kind of stuff you can access on a phone in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually, the internet's crazy. Does Safe Search even pretend to work anymore? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to try something. 
Go, go right, ahead. All right. Though. Sounds good. Um, the average gambler using online casino games is typically 45 or older. However, research typically shows that gambling among teenagers is rising and that teens exposed to gambling from a young age are more likely to struggle with gambling uh, with a gambling addiction as adults. I wonder if the gambling among teenagers rising has anything to do with a lot of the gambling creators that have been rising up over the last few years. Um, over 80% of adults in Australia engage in some form of gambling. Whoa, the highest rate in the world. Okay, okay, that makes sense. With around 1% of the population suffering serious consequences due to problem gambling. That's really high. Because I wonder what serious comp uh, consequences means. And it's probably actually, like, quite serious. Because that would be that would require reporting. Um, the change would affect many games that are currently rated G, such as FIFA. Ooh. But also games with gambling mini games, such as the slot machines in early gen Pokemon. Oh, I didn't even think. Normalizing about that. gambling with little kids is actually a huge problem. Yeah. I'm glad that they're trying to do something, but I do worry about what the effectiveness will be where we're relying on a lot of open world games have some form of casino. Sure. And where's the line between a loot box that is actually paid and a gambling like or loot box like game mechanic? I mean, is the entire game of Pokemon just a giant gambling machine? Because <laughs> of like walking in the grass, you don't know what Just you're gonna find. RNG. It might take you two hours to get that Abra, yeah, um, and th that you might be able to trade for real money with a friend, especially with internet connectivity. Yeah. yeah, they they also go on to mention Stardew Valley. The thing that jumped into my head was Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, like you can. Yeah, it's in Vegas. You can gamble in Fallout. Does that make it a gambling game? I wouldn't immediately think that, but it's interesting. Discussion question. If these kinds of laws become widespread, how would it affect game development? Should this be adopted elsewhere? I mean... Like we just said. It's been interesting. No, you can go for it. It's been interesting watching gambling get deregulated. Mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. in our lives yeah like watching uh like ads for sports it's just constantly like you want to gamble on the results of the game whoa it was always under the table back alley stuff when we were growing up and now it's like very in your face all the time yeah like it's it's kind of like going down to the states and every other ad on TV is for a pharmaceutical product. That's you're like, weird. Yeah, it, it weirds me out. So you're not you're not allowed to advertise um, pharmaceutical products in uh, in Canada, at least not in the same way that you can in the states. Like you won't just see a, a commercial on TV for Cialis or whatever. Um, and so it's it's jarring. It's like really jarring. And in the same way, growing up as kids, where gambling was a thing that, you know, know your limit, play within it. You know, the, like, I, I know the anti-gambling slogans yeah. far better than I know the gambling slogans. And as someone who hasn't had a TV service, like a paid TV service as an adult and can't see ads, whenever I do see a gambling ad, it's like, whoa, really? Like, you could do that? I, 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 thought we, I thought we actually invest, like, public funding in making sure people don't do that and then... But then, okay, sure, I get, uh, all right, I guess that's how it works now, right? Um, yeah, it's odd. I do find the, just to jump on the pharmaceuticals thing, I know this has probably been memed to death, but it is so funny that, like, over half of the pharmaceutical ad is this gigantic disclaimer about how it can do horrible things to you. I always find that very entertaining. Oh, the, can the Canadian regulation, according to Twitch chat, which is very reliable, apparently you can say the medication name. Because, yeah, as soon as I said that, I was like, no, I think I've seen a commercial for Cialis. You can say the name, you can say what it does, but not both. Oh. So it's kind of like, you know how alcohol commercials, uh, sometime in our lifetime, they changed, so you couldn't actually show people drinking it. Oh. You could show people holding it. You could show it being poured. You could show them having fun and being like, you know, hot or whatever. Um, but you couldn't yeah, actually... Yeah, you always see them fill the glass, but then they just stand there. Yeah. I never like thought about this. Yeah. That's funny. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, whole, it's a whole thing. I think it could definitely affect things, but I feel like this law would affect things significantly more if it was implemented 
like you were saying earlier, when people were buying all of their games physically and in person. Yeah. Um, As it is now, you just VPN into whatever region deregulates have it. have that restriction. And game developers are not going to care. They're, They're going to be like, yeah, that. what do I care if they do that? And then if we ever worked with a game developer, Luke would lose his shit because we're supporting bad people I did somehow. Not, I said you could do it anyways, and I don't need to do with everything. I did not lose my shit. Oh. My goodness, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot back by talking about an AI topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, hold on, hold on. No. Can I just try to defeat Safe Search in like? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see how long it takes. Yeah. I'm gonna start with boobies, which okay. presumably will be birds. Birds. Okay. Good. Okay. Oh. Nope. That didn't take long. Not if you click on images. <laughs> There's this Obama one is pretty good. That is kind of funny. Actually. Um. You guys can't. <laughs> that's actually a thing. Well, okay, yeah, it gets pretty. Uh, gets pretty racy pretty fast. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. There's a lot of birds, in fairness. There's a, and it, it seems like it goes through phases. Like there was birds, yep. and then there was pictures that you would expect if you weren't on Safe Search, and then there was. Did it just stop you? I add nude, and it says results hidden. Pew. To see results, manage your Safe Search settings. <laughs> oh, okay. If you were on a kid account, I'm assuming it wouldn't give you that option. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah, I, I guess that's possible. But again, that assumes that I am that I am managing the kid's account properly. Right? But there's even like and there's there's like you think of Nintendo. Like Nintendo's yeah. probably the company that I would say most promotes its parental controls. Sure. If that makes sense. People were still using like Nintendo DS's browser back in the day to look at stuff. Like <laughs> people are gonna okay. find a way. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um, anyways, a ton of stuff happened in AI, but we only have one main topic. Um, I will kind of loop in a couple things into this topic, but it is what it is. AI experts advocate pause on high level AI development. Over 1,000 experts, including engineers, researchers, and notable tech luminaries, have signed an open letter asking for a six-month pause to development of AI beyond the bounds already reached by GPT-4. Their argument is that in the recent rush to develop AI systems, we have not had the necessary time as a global society to fully consider the risks of developing human competitive AI intelligence. The letter further argues that if private entities are unwilling to restrict themselves voluntarily, governments should step in to regulate AI development. Some notable signatories include Elon Musk. Can I stop that for a second? Stop what? Isn't he like anti-government regu oh. regulations? He, could, could he be, could he be <laughs> less consistent <laughs> in some way? Is that possible for him to be less consistent? To... to <laughs> to throw him a bone in this scenario, he has been highly concerned about AI for a super long time and been calling for regulation for a super long time. Yes. Yes. But he only calls for regulation when it doesn't affect him. So that's consistent. This regulation... Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to pause my response to that because I want to finish the notes, but I have a... I, I'm going to jump on your side in a moment. Yeah. Um, this has led to crit uh, Elon Musk, Stephen Wozniak, and the CEO of Stability AI. This has yeah. led to criticisms that the true mo motive behind some signatories is to slow down AI development so that their own AI investments can catch up to the competition. Now we're done the notes. I'm going to jump yeah. back on that. I'm very certain that this is specifically, at least as far as Elon is concerned, yes. trying to target OpenAI because he's, he's really mad. mad. <laughs> Because this will 100% only target OpenAI right now. There's yeah. all these articles about how like Google's Bard is literally trained on GPT-4 outputs. There's th There was this website, I don't remember what it was, I don't think it was ran by OpenAI, but it was like a collection of people's conversations that they had had that they submit to the website so people can see all these different conversations yeah. that have been had. And they were training it off of that website. They were trying to get Bard's results more similar to, to, GPT. The, to the results that they were seeing in that website. Right. And they got oh, caught man. doing this. And OpenAI, like, knows they did it. Like, they are absolutely the target of this. Also, I have 
no faith whatsoever that we, because we're talking about the global community, would be able to come to some conclusion in the next six months about how this is going to go? The global community can't come to a conclusion about anything. anything. Like, like, not murdering each other all the time. Yeah. Like, we can't agree that that's we're gonna get a good idea. We're going to get nowhere with this. Yeah. Also, like, if, uh, let's say, uh, the government of a very large militarized company or country, sorry, yeah, same diff. Um, if they <laughs> wanted the benefits, <laughs> well, it's not me with the spicy take this week. If they wanted the benefits of some system, you think they're going to pause it? No, of course not. Yeah, I don't know. I in like a everything goes perfect world, like sure, let's slow it down and figure out how we're going to do things. But like people that have, if if these exist. Yeah. If there are competitive systems with GPT-4 right now that just aren't public for whatever reason, uh, held by governments or other companies or whatever, yep. you think they're going to stop? No, of course not. Even no if you, shot. Even if you told them to stop and they were like, yeah, we stopped. They're just going to keep going anyways. Like, what? what is everyone who works there going to do? Yeah. Twiddle their play play ping pong like, for six months? Like there's I, probably other stuff that they can do too. This is another thing I thought yeah. of. Like if this somehow does go through, you think OpenAI is just going to completely sit on their hands? Yeah, of course no, not. They'll just build like other supporting things yeah. so that when they're able to work on it again, they just ramp even further. Uh, I don't know. Some of the... Uh, development that's happened around gpt4 and the hook stuff is really crazy my account doesn't have access to plugins so i haven't yeah. been able to do it myself um but watching it i've seen other people's results watching it use the plugins to think has been pretty wild uh because like i've i've known about wolfram alpha for a long time which is that like math yeah. tool i didn't i haven't used it since i was in university i didn't realize that its error output is written in like human language. Oh, that's cool. That helps GPT-4 a lot. Right. <laughs> There's also people that are already setting up tools, making it so that even without the support of OpenAI, they have... Like, There's a paper on this. Someone wrote a paper on it. It's extremely interesting. Where they set up a system... Uh, a series of tools that all conversed back and forth so that they were able to externally make the project that OpenAI was talking about, about giving OpenAI access to itself because they just linked multiple accounts together through one controller. Yeah. And then they gave the controller the task of telling the other accounts that they're like, what their job is in the queue and getting everything built and... It's all happening. It doesn't matter if you tell them to pause. They're going to keep going anyways. Yeah. Um, and if it's not, like if you put tons of watchdogs on OpenAI, I'm sure they'll find some way to work on something. OpenAI as a organization, as far as I can tell, which this could just be them trying to convince me in succeeding. I have no idea. As far as I can tell, they are somewhat concerned about the ethics of all this kind of stuff. But they're marching forward anyways mm -hmm. that's what people are gonna do yep we are actually going to destroy ourselves oh like, yeah we all definitely. know that right yeah like for sure yep i was talking to you about a thing that i don't know if yep. i want to uh say yet because i don't want to like claim it until i'm more sure but uh another project that i thought that's been really cool is do you know about llama yeah uh so it's like locally ran people have set up uh like microphone arrays in their house and some someone posted a project where they made it so that they use siri voice whatever through a macbook to write into a, a, a like llama input mm -hmm. so that they could converse with it back and forth through voice and i know someone else who's been setting up a microphone array in their house so that they have like a jarvis like that project is happening now yeah you're not going to stop this stuff. And especially when you get to the point where people can just ask ChatGPT to write whatever plugin or whatever hook they need. Because like the problem right now is that these voice assistants or AI assistants or whatever, they can't do anything. You have no reason to talk to them. But if any idiot with vocal cords can just say, or, 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 or hands, or any way of inputting text can just say, uh, oh, write a thing so that ChatGPT 
or llama or whatever can uh, control my smart blinds. Here's the brand, find them on my network or whatever. It'll actually do stuff, yeah. which is which is cool. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, good luck everybody. I don't wanna, what what is your what is your thoughts on the pause? Do you well, it's just, at, just it's asinine. Of, yeah. like, good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> it's like uh how would they even oh, how do you man. think they would even try to enforce something it's, it's like, like this? It's like it's I think it's like it's like a ceasefire in like a in a in a traditional war. Yeah, just because we're not firing rounds doesn't mean we're going to stop manufacturing them. Everyone's just going to super focus on logistics and troop movement and intelligence and all this other type of stuff so that they're as ready as but think about uh uh like peace in civilization. <laughs> We were talking about Civ earlier in yeah. the show. What happens when you declare peace and civilization? You both build up as much as you can because it ends in 10 turns. Like, <laughs> it's, let's go. It's coming. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Atomic Age Ace, I think, has it nailed down. What we really need is an AI trained entirely off of Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, that amused me. It was in the flow plane chat. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a way that they could work on it without making it better necessarily is something that's been brought up is uh that making an ai that is like uh good in the sense of like good natured bad natured whatever is basically impossible due to all the different cultures in the world because you're gonna be like my morals are good but that's not necessarily gonna line up with someone somewhere else so you almost need to make it so that those parts are like modular. Right. So like, oh man, you know what? I am it not gets really messy. Really. I fast. am not going to pick a polarizing <laughs> issue to say like, that could be a module okay. that you would unplug or replug depending on the part of the world that the AI is operating in or, or um, political affiliation or whatever. Yeah, else. exactly. Yeah. But, but like, is that the right route to go? I don't know. I've seen I've seen some some people big mad about AIs spitting oh, yeah. out like oh, objectively yeah. factual stances on some very polarizing issues oh, that yeah. significant portions of the population do not understand well enough to know that that's actually just a way better answer than what they think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like big mad. So biased. It, so, um, so it's like they they could spend this six month, six months yeah. trying to tackle like that problem. That doesn't technically advance. It's they probably just won't bother. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It uh, there's yeah. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, the future is very uncertain. I I feel bad for. People that are in like, you know, like late high school right now. Because you're in that stage where you're like, okay, I'm leaving the like. The, the nursery. The standard required education system. The, the, the walkthrough. I the, have to go tutorial. to either school yeah. or get a job or whatever. What career path do I put myself on when I have very low experience? Because a lot of the jobs that are most at risk are non-expert style positions. But then yeah. how do you get to an expert style position if you can't gain job work experience? So like if everyone just replaces all the low level jobs, how do you fill the positions of the high level so jobs? So we become batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, Neo. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we already are. <laughs> oh man. Um, right. aren't we all just training data? Let's 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 move on. All right, I have to run to the washroom. Do you want to go through some of the exciting creators who have confirmed their attendance at LTX? Yes. While Where I, is this? At the bottom. We have a bunch of creators confirming their attendance to LTX 2023, including Linus Tech Tips. Whoa. Whoa. Tech Wiki. Whoa. I guess we should probably share my screen. There we go. Uh, outside of our own channels, there's i3 cubed, 3D printing nerd. Ant Venom, Bad Seed Tech, Barnacles, Brandon Y. Lee. Oh my god, he's coming? Whoa. Coalition Gaming. Uh, Dawid does tech stuff. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I've heard it said before. Uh, Gear Seekers, Greg Salazar, Jared's Tech, Jay's Two Cents, uh, M. Kibitz. 
I'm Kibitz. There we go. I got there. Level one text, Lewis Rossman, nerd on a budget, Oz Talks Hardware, Paul's Hardware, Pedro PCMR, Sarah Dici, Shank Mods, Snazzy Lab, Strange Parts, Tech Joyce, Tech Tech Potato, The Sushi Dragon, and this is Tech Today and UFD Tech. Subject to change, because there might be more. Or maybe someone can't make it. But that's that's pretty cool. That's the wrong camera. Cam only. That's still the wrong camera. That's, that's there fine. we go. Yeah, I made it eventually. There's so many people that I would love to meet there. Well, you're going to. That's weird. I don't, I don't like this feeling. It's strange. Why? I don't know. I'm new at this. What? I, I, I don't know. I work with, with Linus, and I'm like, he's my coworker. And okay. then I go to this and I see other like big stars. I'm like, oh. Were oh. you, did you watch the channel? Were you a fan of the channel before you joined? And yes and no, but yeah, probably from the very early days. Yeah. Okay. Was it weird meeting Linus for the first time? No. Well, I then would, I think you'll be fine. I would say no. Yeah, yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, should I go into another topic? I mean, what else you got? Well, Linus do plans I wanna, to... Do you want me to do some merch messages for you? Murder me. Sure, yeah. If there's any targeted towards me, let's do that. I think there's a few here. Yeah. Let me see if I can find some. All right. For Luke, Yeah. what scale of infrastructure is required but, to run float plane? Can you reveal your server count? Um, uh, that isn't something that I particularly keep track. Or bandwidth usage, that's also up and down. Um... The bandwidth usage, I wonder if I can find it. Uh, my phone is like hidden way under the table because it was doing lots of interference. The bandwidth usage that happened when we got banned off of YouTube was absurd. It was this like absolutely enormous spike. Uh, and it didn't immediately just go down. Like we thought like, oh, the, we're back live on YouTube again. The account is unbanned. We're expecting float plane traffic to drop now. And it was like, nah. <laughs> people are actually just using it and it's pretty cool did so you go that was all the creators already pretty wild yeah okay did you yeah. clarify that this is to the best of their ability and if things happen things happen yeah subject to change there might be yeah. more some people might not be able to make it stuff yeah. like that yeah. oh, there will almost certainly be more but there may be less uh, you never know and it's there's no hard feelings it, life happens it could also be like super last minute right yep like absolutely who knows um so yeah, but yeah, the bandwidth is is high and server count is is also high. But then we also scale into like public cloud infrastructure. So how do you count that? I don't know. Yeah, things are. Yeah, moving on. Topic. Should we talk about the changes to Twitter Blue slash legacy verification? Sure. I don't I, even know what they are. I was kind of eloned out for a long time there, but this is a pretty big change. Be back. Uh, this is this is like. He's reached the end game now of oh. destroying the platform. So, where is this? Um, Twitter legacy verification will be sunsetting tomorrow. Uh, note okay. this does not appear to be an April Fool's joke. Very amazingly timed, though. Yeah, corporations and organizations that are looking to retain their verified status will have to pay a thousand dollars a month for their main account, plus fifty dollars a month for any additional accounts. So that would be. Any users? All the user accounts are 50 bucks? Corporations and organizations. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So $1,000 a month for the parent company, and then like each YouTube channel for us, in, for example, would be 50 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> um, I will not be paying that. Yeah, screw that noise. In a reply to William Shatner, Elon Musk said that the move to sunset legacy verification was about fairness. <laughs> In unrelated news, Twitter's top 500 advertisers and its top 10,000 most followed accounts will be exempt from the $1,000 a month fee. Okay. Are we completely done now? Are we completely done pretending that any of this was about free speech, anything, so, or public square, anything? What does this verification do with it? I mean, yeah. Uh, what, okay. is, what does this cool. verification do Check at mark. this point? But more. On April 15th, Twitter's For You page will only contain tweets from accounts that the user follows directly and accounts that are subscribed to Twitter Blue. So okay. with, the, with the check mark. As promised by Musk, Twitter recently made a portion of its code public, including its recommendation algorithm. 
The For You page currently contains an average of a 50-50 mix of accounts that the user directly follows and those that they do not. So you may also like that sort of thing. It also contains a list of notable users called power users, as well as the option to increase the visibility of these users at will from the back end. The algorithm also notes whether a tweet was created by a power user and what their political affiliation is if they are a public figure or a political figure, excuse me. There is a separate flag for if the author of the tweet is Elon Musk. Okay, so as far as my understanding goes, they open sourced the Twitter algorithm and I saw screenshots of this and I literally thought it was a joke. What? Okay, yeah, so I, I, I saw this. It said Democrat, Republican, uh, power user and Elon Musk. Those were the four different like user flags. I 100% thought it was a joke. Really? Musk states that he was not previously aware of the labels and that it doesn't make sense to divide users on the basis of political allegiance. A oh. Twitter engineer has said that they were used purely for metrics. In a memo to employees, Musk claimed that Twitter is now worth $20 billion and that Twitter can be thought of as an inverse startup but that he sees a clear but difficult path to a future valuation of more than 250 billion. Our discussion question <laughs> is, is this a purposeful attempt to make the Twitter user experience more hostile? <laughs> I can't, I could kind of see it. I can kind of see it because obviously he needs a way out of this thing. Like okay. this is awful. And he needs to spend his time running SpaceX and Tesla. And Is he still spending like all his time doing Twitter and stuff? And whatever. It, it seems to be not zero. And the correct amount Fair of enough. time for Elon Musk to spend managing Twitter <laughs> is zero. Is zero. <laughs> yeah. However, he has third-party investors that helped him make this acquisition. If he doesn't at least, in good faith, over some period of time that we would have no way of knowing... Um, make some kind of arguably earnest effort to turn this thing around, he's not only going to be on the hook for any kind of operating costs that he's on the hook for now, but he could be on the hook for paying back those investors. We have no idea what the terms of those deals were. Yeah. So he must be, it seems, maybe, again, though, maybe I'm attributing 4D chess moves to someone who, I, I mean, <laughs> why did you buy this thing? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, so, so it could be that these legitimately are attempts to make the user experience more hostile and worse, so that Define over time, hostile in the, hostile in this situation. Mm, like, how how is it exactly making the user experience hostile? Well, it's hostile to anyone who's trying to grow on the platform. I would make that argument. If you can't get featured on the For You page, I think that it makes a clear divide between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, so with this, with this, I guess I have a lot of questions here. Like, would this still show, like if you, if, okay, I won't put it on you. I'll put it on me. Say, uh, this is never gonna happen. Say I was a paid subscriber Twitter, whatever, paid verification thing. Yeah, Twitter blue. So my stuff can show up in the verified page. Yeah. If I like your tweet and you're not, would that interaction show up? No, because for you is tweets. Oh, it's just tweets. Yeah, not likes from people that you follow. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What page shows that? Uh, I think that's just the notification feed. I can't remember. I, I've hardly used it lately. I go on as little as possible. I do... There's a few people, like industry people, that I DM on Twitter. That's our main method of communication. So I open the app fairly often, but I try not to linger. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is yeah, it's weird. They, he mentioned previously about like uh, free speech absolutism for the town square, but no free, what did he call it? No free like... Lunch. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that we won't, like, broadcast your voice for free, basically. Yeah, so, you so can, then like, it's not a town square. You can, like, whisper in the corner of the town square. <laughs> yeah, which is exactly what he claimed was a problem before. Uh, so, suppression know. of particular... Yeah, anyway. I, this uh, is never going to be worth $250 billion. How, like, how? How? That's uh, the, the, One of my arguments that I've, I believe I've been rather consistent about with Twitter is just, like, 
it's never going to make money. Well, I think he has to say this, though. No, I, I, I hear you. If he doesn't say this, then... But just, like, how do you, how do you fall for that? And, like, maybe in, uh, let's say, 10 years from now, someone brings this up and Twitter's worth a quarter billion dollars and I look like an idiot. But, like, what are you talking about? How? How? <laughs> I don't I don't get it. You bought a garbage fire and it's still a garbage fire. I don't know. Um I mean, that's the thing about a garbage fire though. Is eventually either eventually all the garbage and all the fire are gone. It can't burn forever. <laughs> I feel like all the people like just continuing to use it no matter what is adding the fuel. I I'm I'm quite surprised at the amount of people that are still on the platform. But I think for a lot of people, it's like basically irreplaceable. But they're not, it's irreplaceable, but they are 100% not willing to pay for it, which is a very interesting setup. Yeah. They will not stop using it, but they also will not pay for it. Yeah. It's the internet. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's, it's true the, it's for the like internet almost attitude. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, like we, we've talked a lot about, mm -hmm. about the, could there be a paradigm shift between an ad supported internet? and uh, a paid internet and we've basically gone like no it'll never happen because people are they, they don't want ads but they accept them because they are utterly unwilling to pay for services i have not experienced this and we're speaking I don't know. broadly obviously yeah 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 of course someone in chat Sup, is float plane chat screaming because they're an example of the other side but yeah. it's not it's not most people um i i have not personally experienced this so i can't verify its its truth and images are mean literally nothing for verification these days but someone showed me a screenshot of apparently bing chat inserting an ad into a conversation that they had with it they asked it about buying a certain product and they were like what about this one it has a good affiliate program yeah <laughs> this is exactly why i was saying i was very happy that like the the chat gpt thing or i was hoping that they went in the direction of a subscription and then i'm, sure. I'm very happy that they did uh is because yeah like everything you have to find like other indirect ways of monetization because no one's going to pay for stuff <sighs> crazy well i hated twitter before and it sounds like it's going to be even less useful yeah. I, okay. I think, in my opinion, the biggest thing that gets hurt here is another point that he used to make, which was about, <laughs> which is about the proliferation of news from like individuals, mm -hmm. because someone, an individual, will like witness something, and then they are the first point of truth for this news thing that's going on. Yeah. Um, that's now going to go nowhere unless they subscribe to Twitter Blue. Yeah. In the town square. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, it almost doesn't matter how much it costs. It's in USD, I'm assuming. So there's going to be places in the world where it's just not feasible to purchase for a huge percentage of people. I have no idea. They may have regional pricing. I just, I, I sort of don't care at this point. This is not going to work. This is this is going to disappear. It's also not going to make them <laughs> $250 billion. I said a quarter billion dollars before. Quarter trillion dollars. Sorry. Yeah, $250 billion dollars is super de duper <laughs> not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy well that's cool um e3 is canceled for 2023 and perhaps forever e3 has been canceled again this year it hasn't been held since 2021 and its organizers refuse to answer whether it will return in 2024 either even prior to the pandemic many large gaming companies were holding their own separate events before or after e3 starting with nintendo in 2011 leading to a slow drain on e3's industry cachet the benefit of these separate events was that they allowed companies an exclusive stage to present carefully choreographed content rather than sharing the spotlight and potentially embarrassing themselves with an unscripted moment. It likewise allowed many professionals in the industry to meet face-to-face -face and for reviewers to get an early hands-on preview with new hardware. Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft had all officially declined attendance at the 2023 E3 well before the cancellation. Last month, Ubisoft promised to attend E3 if it happened uh, before cancelling earlier this week. Discussion question. How much of a loss is this, and what, if anything, will replace E3? Have you been? I never went. We as a company attended once, but I believe that was you. Yeah. Was it once or was it more it than once? It was one time, and I was asked if we should go again, and I said no. 
Uh, <laughs> oof, this might be throwing some fire, but what a like useless show. I don't want to be that guy. I'm sorry. But attending that show, I love this type of stuff. It's like literally one of my favorite things to do is go to shows. We were not known in the gaming space at that time. So we got to do nothing because all of the cool stuff is like behind doors or it's in a gigantic conference room with tons of cameras anyways because it's like Xbox announcing something which people are just going to watch the stream anyways. I love these types of shows but functionally uh, there's a reason why these companies are stepping out exactly like what you just said. Nintendo directs get huge attendance and coverage yeah people watch those religiously like they're they're crazy about them the amount of people that are going to be able to walk through the nintendo booth at e3 is not that high and if nintendo has something like really crazy to show off that's like borderline unannounced and like they have one prototype they're not going to put it on the floor they're going to put it behind closed doors anyways yeah so it's just like ugh. The, the future of these types of events are the games comms and paxes of the world because they're community events yeah but the industry events here i don't th i'm not surprised e3 didn't happen i will be extremely unsurprised if it happens again and i'm sure i just pissed a bunch of people off by saying the stuff i just said but like uh, back when we went to it i was already thinking like wow i'm stunned this exists you see it happening to uh ces even and CES is more physical stuff yeah. than E3. And uh, people are still doing their own events or just not going and doing like web announcements of their own things. I've got some people talking about how it was good for developers, but yeah, pretty weak for users. Yeah, but that's that's not... Then it's a different show at that point. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Make it like E3 dev or something. Sure. Like PAX has a, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but PAX has like a, a mini developer conference that usually happens before the main show of PAX starts. And that can make sense. But it's this like E3 is set up as this huge public announcement stage, basically. And it's it's not that good at that anymore. So, but yeah, it could, it could absolutely be this like developer event. Tons of those exist. <laughs> yes, of course it could do that, but it's not set up that way. I think it is very TV era, and we're yeah. we're pretty out of that now. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. We should probably do some merch messages. Actually, oh yeah, no, we still got oh we still got a couple topics. Dolphin emulator. Oh I think wait, we've one. got holy crap! I knew I need to do this first. Um, my light switches. Oh boy have been a problem for me yeah um even though i i was clearly desperately seeking oh. a solution to my wi-fi troubles a little while ago when i misdiagnosed that um you know they're not actually causing interference at least on my local network they don't work very well i went through and i was trying to add some more to my controller and they're doing this weird thing where they two on the network will end up with the same ID and then one will wipe out the other one and then I don't know which one it wiped out and then I have to go uh, exclude both of them and then try re-including them and maybe they'll grab a unique ID or maybe they won't. They're just, they're not working very well. To Jasco's credit, they did um, make their firmware available, but I'm still not happy with the product and the, the overall experience. So... Um, a more sort of community-oriented company, Innovelli, who we were very close to using a product from when we were originally setting up the place, but ultimately didn't because they didn't have a switch with motion or presence detect. We wanted to use motion as part of a presence detection system, and they didn't have anything that did motion detection or presence detection integrated into the switch. Well, guess what? Um, let me just go ahead and click on this. Okay. It is not currently live because I told them we were going to we were gonna go for it live on the show. And uh I think they were hoping to kind of punch it at the same time. So I'll give them I'll give them another few minutes. I feel terrible that we took this long. To, uh, to get to this, because maybe they've like gone to bed. I don't know what time zone they're even in. I feel, I feel terrible. The anyway, second link does load a page. 
Yeah, so I'll bring that up in a second. Anyway, um, Eric and his team at Innovelli saw our struggle and decided to do something about it by bringing the smart back into smart home. This is, this is from, from them, I think. By creating the ultimate smart switch, one that uses millimeter wave technology as a form of radar to sense the presence of a person in the room, not just movement. So you don't have to keep like waving your hand every few minutes to keep yourself from sitting in the dark. Um, today, they are launching a crowdfunding campaign for what they are calling internally. And this was actually a source of tension between me and Inavelli because they called it Project Linus yeah, I remember that. without talking to me about it. And I was like, hey, that's actually not that cool because it really sounds like we're affiliated in some way. We're still not affiliated, not an investor in Inavelli. I have no skin in the game other than that I just want a good switch um and they are still calling it project linus internally apparently um so they're launching a crowdfunding campaign they are hoping expecting to be able to meet their goal a minimum of one hundred and twenty-five thousand to cover the engineering fees and the minimum order order quantity but if not they will be refunding all backers and they are planning to launch i think during the show today let me see if it's actually it is live all right so i'm going to post this in the chat really excited about this switch it's um i've kind of i've kind of told them all the pain points that i have with my existing jasco switches uh flickering um not really very broad control of dimming across a variety of different lights um adoption problems uh configuration limitations uh, the fact that they're just motion, like the, the original plan was to use a combination of motion and other factors. And we just, because we, the switches don't work at all, we haven't gotten around to integrating motion with the cameras or integrating motion with um, some kind of IR presence detector or anything like that. Uh, but this looks like, assuming they get everything nailed down, the solution to my problem, I hope. And they've got a pretty good track record. We don't promote Kickstarters or Indiegogos. We yeah. didn't take any advertising fees or anything like that. Um, so no money has changed hands. I just really want hope this, this switch to exist. Yeah. I really want this switch to exist. Um, I just noticed it doesn't need a neutral wire. I, um, that's, that's pretty amazing. That means I could use them in my house. I don't have neutral wires. Oh, yeah. Another thing that drives me crazy about my existing ones is that they have, like, a main switch with the motion sensor, and then they have a secondary switch that doesn't have a motion sensor. It's just a regular rocker. So in a large room, like in the rec room, there's parts where there is a motion sensor, and there's parts where there isn't one. So my understanding is these shouldn't need that relationship i could have the millimeter wave sensor in both locations so it doesn't matter what part of the room you're hanging out in uh, it's particularly uh, problematic on stairs because where you uh, have a three-way switch on a staircase yeah. it only automatically activates on one end yeah it's just, just like okay <laughs> um, guess i don't need to see yeah I, I guess when i'm going down it's like whatever um automated led bar notifications um, I've been looking at that LED bar thing. That's cool. Upgradable to matter. Pretty excite. Uh, they're working with Home Assistant to make sure that it integrates with Home Assistant. Ooh, smart bulb control. All right. So, so if this makes it, are you are you doing a full rack of these? Yeah. I hope so. I mean, it has to not be crap, but like yeah. I said, they have a pretty good track record so far. So I'm pretty excited. I hope hoping for the best. All right. Well, they've got their one percent of the way to their goal so far. The page is having a hard time loading now. Oh, sorry. I guess we. What do you think Indiegogo, Indiegogo would, would hold it together? Yeah. What's up with that? I don't really know. It could just be this laptop. This laptop sometimes does have problems. Nope. It's uh, it's me too. It's you too. Okay. Yeah. You hugged it. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't think you'd you'd hug Indiegogo, but maybe uh, Kickstarter style stuff is not as in vogue these days. Yeah, maybe the the server hamsters are tired. Yeah, um, got some backers going already. Okay, uh, I think we have one more small topic, and then we're on to let's do some merch messages first. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get set up here. Yeah, we got a we got a few today. Oh, um, actually, hold yeah. on. First of all, Nick messaged me. I think, I I think his intention is to, or his his leaning is for us to do affiliate stuff. 
Um, by extension of this argument, we should not accept sponsorships from any brand that works with any influencer that might not disclose their sponsorship. That could basically remove all brands. Um, all we can really do is be the change we want to see in the world. And if we say, sure, look, good. you have to disclose. I said you don't have to. Okay. Well, look, I mean, people are like super mad. And I'm like, I don't think right. that's a good stance either. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, you want some merch messages? Yeah. yeah, I do want merch messages. All right. Yeah. I think I think the thing that was maybe lost is that my argument was that you should try. Sure. Oh, I think the thing that you maybe lost when I was trying to explain that the reason okay. we were you talking don't have to go like that to people in you no can no calm down no the when we were when we were talking to people individually the reason we were doing that was because we did try. Okay. That was my that was my point. I was like, well, okay. Um, yeah, we did try. They don't. Right. They I, just, don't do I that. got a lot of pushback on asking if they had some type of integrity checks or anything. Ah, oh, I think both you and I are going to go back and watch that segment and be Probably. like, "This happens. seriously, this happens." Yeah, because I thought this I, is why I was telling them that I yeah. like don't want people necessarily on my side. Okay, is like I think there's more nuance to the entire discussion, and we just got wrapped up in like whatever. And it's like actually probably not a big deal. That's why I also wanted to move on. I thought I made that clear, but I thinking back, I probably didn't. I also might have just missed it. I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever. I, it's it's really not that deep, and like you guys should really not be like that worried about it. <laughs> it's like, I think one of my favorite things about LTT Store is the level of integrity that the store has, and I have always enjoyed how we do stuff as a company yeah. uh, it's not going to change because of this thing and all i want to make sure is that we we're doing due diligence as much as we could and if we're like we're pretty sure these guys are cool that's often as far as you can go it sounded like you had a very unrealistic expectation for what i could do which is why i sort of took it too far and i kind of went well what should we should we check every site on the internet to see how people are using the link like because obviously you can't do that but um, like I also strongly enjoy, we're we're coming back. We're we're making it happen. Uh, <laughs> that's why I enjoy yeah. like when we dropped like Anchor, for example. Well, if yeah. we do detect, that's also when I was trying to talk about like, well, of course, if we do detect stuff, we have a very extensive track record running the entire length of the company sure. of being willing to drop, well, and then maybe if they shift things and they change whatever, that was intentional, wasn't it? What? Drop? Our, our, yeah, our extensive track record of dropping things. Oh, it actually wasn't, but oh, I, I enjoy right. that. Thank I, you for I, that. That should have been it. I should have just claimed it. Um, but no, I wasn't trying to dig you. Uh, and then maybe being willing to work with them again if they if they change or sure. improve or whatever. But like, I, yeah, I don't like the idea that we just like, oh, this is just a weird space to shotgun everything. Well, we're not going to do that. Right. I will say 100% that we will require all the legal disclosures that we require of ourselves when working with partners. All I'm saying is we should do yeah. everything we can to try to ensure that if we're working with aggregates, they're the best ones we can. Okay. If we're working with whatever sites, they're the best ones we can. Sure. And we're transparent about what we're doing. And then I think we're in the clear. But like it has to, and this, I probably did a bad job of communicating that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, whatever. But like, if we're transparent about what we're doing, then the audience can also be somewhat of a watchdog for us. It sounded like what you were saying was we should just, if the space is ugly, then we should not participate well, at all. We should just leave status quo. Maybe, but it depends how ugly it is. And I was sitting there going, well, the status quo isn't good. If we come in and we say, okay, well, anytime you engage with us, you need proper disclosures. Net, net, we are a positive space. We are a positive influence. I, I think, I still think it like, like, it, it depends on how muddy the space is. Well, I'll tell you this. We're not going to pay anyone a flat fee without disclosure. And our affiliate program, I think really the safest thing would be for it to be open. For it to be a that, hammer. It, yeah. And honestly, in I do agree with that. Because like at a certain point, like you were trying, the, the argument you're trying to make about the, I don't remember what it was. We, we can't sell hammers because people might use them to hit people or whatever. Yeah. We got really off the rails. We, we did get pretty while. off the rails. <laughs> um, at a certain point, you can't control everything. But if you're doing that open affiliate 
thingamajig. If there's maybe some way, I don't know. If you detect someone using it in a stupid way, you can try to get them to stop. But like, it just is what it is. Hopefully Buddy on float plane is ready for us to come after them. Was that a float plane chat where they were saying, yeah, I run a bunch of those sites and they're super effective? Yeah. Yeah, we're coming for you. Yeah. We're coming for you. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's really not it's really not that deep. I don't think audience people should be that concerned about it. It's yeah. very normal. I just don't I'm not I think you and I both don't really like marketing. Yes. <laughs> So there's a lot of concerns, but there's a lot of concerns yeah. with everything. And you have to, yeah. I was talking to a, a, a YouTube creator about this recently. You have to make the bag. You have to. And like, as much as that's like, when I was growing up, I was he very. He means make the backpack, not like get that bag. No, I mean, get that bag. Oh. You have to make money. Oh, oh, okay. Well, okay. Like get that bag has sort of does it a semi-negative I... connotation of like. YOLO, take the get the bag. Oh, okay. Like, I, I I'm not yeah. I'm not one of the cool kids. Um, you have to make money, and you should try to do it with integrity, of course. But you do have to make money. And going with the stance, like when we first started working together, yeah, I was very against like any advertisements ever and stuff. And I was like, just check out our forum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, Which doesn't make money, by the way. And I still believe in that stuff to a certain degree at yep. this point we can and back then it hurt us a little bit but i appreciated your approach on it because we only worked with people that we thought we could verify and then we got to a certain size where it's like we have some weight to throw around so we can increase the amount of companies that we can work with but then if they start doing things in bad ways we can drop them and we have a diverse income portfolio and we'll be okay yep. and yeah we can we'll be keep fine. moving forward we can lose any one partner probably any 10 and that's the other thing I said. You should diversify your stuff a yeah. bunch, but you should try to make money because especially as a creator, you're going to have lows and you're going to have highs, but you're going to have lows and you need to survive through that low yep. until it comes back. We've had lows. Yeah. So like you have to make money. You have to do these marketing things, even if they're uncomfortable or weird or whatever. You have to do some amount of it. Well, yes and no. Because like that's another thing too is I haven't even talked about some of the conversations we've had around like... Um, uh, I forget. So there's different kinds of marketing. I'm only like just learning about it because I kind of, I kind of hate it. Like, <laughs> uh, we. It's funny because I've made a career out of like companies spending their marketing budgets <laughs> on me. And you technically used to do some amount of marketing because I wasn't MDF, very good at it. Right. I was more of a product manager than. Yeah. It, I wasn't in the marketing department. Right. I was. I was sales. And I've always believed the best way to sell is to educate. Because that way, the, the customer who is uneducated will buy one thing. The customer who is educated will buy more because they will trust you. And so it's, it's mutually beneficial. We both win when we create a more educated uh, buying environment. It sure. is, has always been my philosophy. And marketing is kind of like the opposite of that. Marketing is, truth be damned, uh, we need people to buy our <sighs> it's, it's always the way I've kind of felt about it. And so I'm just kind of learning about it now. And it's, there's like these different like branches of, of, of marketing, like outreach marketing and retention marketing and this kind of marketing and that kind of marketing. Okay. And like, yeah. I, I can see now there's going to be a lot of internal debate about what we use and how we use it because the argument is always going to be it's effective. Yeah. And the counterpoint, like you said, I mean, I, I don't mind you pushing back on it. We have to be realistic, but we also have to have these conversations because the counterpoint is always going to be, you know, but what about how do we, how do we differentiate? We can't just look at what everyone else is doing and what's working. We have to also think about who we are. Um, and like, we'll be okay if we don't. No, we'll survive. So sure. But you can't take that approach with everything. Cause like I was just saying about what I was talking to that other creator about, like you have to, you have to make money or else you're just going to have to quit. Yeah, or else you're not going to be making any difference to anything. Yeah. So like shades of gray, baby. There was there was a conversation that we had years ago um where I was I was impressed with something that someone did. And I said that I was I was more impressed because they found a way 
to do this thing that I agreed with in a way that was profitable. Right. And people were unhappy that I pointed that out. But I'm still standing by that. Well, yeah. Because they are now able to still do that thing to this day. And eat. And employ other people and push it to a degree yeah. that there is no possible way they would have been able to get to if they didn't monetize it. And like this is a, <laughs> always find a way. I will do it. Um, this is another argument that OpenAI made recently. Got oh. him! Boom! Brought it all the way around. Um, where the, when, And I don't know if this is legit, and whatever, but they were talking about how they would never have been able to scale the way that they wanted to if they didn't take that outside investment. Right. Because the money that they needed to keep driving forward yeah. was just not good enough when they were staying uh completely non-profit that's a tough one man i really don't know what to do like i i can tell you now it's not today and it's not tomorrow but i can see a wall where you can't yeah because i mean we've talked about this it's yeah. already it's not that bad right now yeah but it could get worse transporting between these two buildings yeah it's a pain in the butt is rough i recognize that i mean i have people complain about it internally and i'm kind of sitting here going okay well what do we do yeah what what, what do what do we do because we can we can lease and we can be at the mercy of a landlord who in five years which we have to we have to think long term like that in five years might mean we have to move just like pick up and move which is brutal or we have to build all these sets and stuff even worse uh we might not be able to find anything so our base might move 10, 20, 45 minutes. But I don't know. I don't know where we're going to be. And now you need like a campus sized yeah. place. Um, I, or, or, or we buy something, which is not an option anymore without outside investment. Um, like there's, there's just, there's, there's no way with the way How that you go up in the scale that you would need to go up. Yeah without that money it's just impossible so like uh, there's there's inflection points and at those inflection points you have to do the best you can and i think where i'm trying to figure out where we got lost in the trees i know i got lost in the trees i'm trying to figure out where that was a point that i was trying to make was that if you are 100 percent certain that a certain entity is bad you shouldn't work with them i mean well yeah that's the like point i was trying to make <laughs> Okay. Uh, but like, there's also degrees of bad. Yeah. And you might be okay with mildly bad. Someone else might not be okay with mildly bad. And there might be like, okay, there's a mild amount of bad, but the amount of good that it also brings can supersede that. Or the amount of gain that we get from this mild bad is so high that we can use that gain to create significantly a, more good. That's a dangerous one. Uh, it's all dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It's that all one was particularly dangerous. It's all kind of rough. It's all kind of rough. We're going to build a good product. Yeah. That's what I can say for sure. Something that lasts, something that we can stand behind. It's going to be okay. Um, Everyone that, can relax. That's the goal. Uh, KG4WWN on Floatplane says, I dare you to try to sell your stuff on QVC. <laughs> what is that? QVC, it's like the shopping Is channel. that the TV thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, also, Sydney Broke, it says, I have a marketing degree. Uh, this isn't all that marketing entails. Marketing can include pre-development conversations, like how do we make a product that fits the market? Um, yes. Okay. But that's not the connotation of yeah. marketing. That's that's market research, which, which yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. Like, I'm not going to argue with you. You're right. That's your program that you did. Uh, but when, when normies like us say marketing, we mean post-development. Yeah. Um, assisting sales it's like like indirect sales essentially i mean they're both marketing and sales go hand in hand all right dan hit us all right first one here's from john linus you said that physical keyboards on phones suck if your recent experience was a landscape oriented keyboard like you showed then how can it be representative of portrait ones i.e blackberry um I mean, I checked out a BlackBerry not that long ago, and it sucked. <laughs> Try to input a special character or an emoji. Like So much of how we communicate through text has changed since physical keyboards were the norm because of the options that we have with touchscreen keyboards. 
Um, so when you go back, now that you are used to having every character in the alphabet and every special character at your fingertips, you kind of go, how, how do I even use this? Also, where is all that screen real estate when I don't need the keyboard? That's the big one. The amount that you hamper your device through that keyboard is pretty crazy. Well, the one I talked about recently was one that was like a slide. So theoretically, it didn't hamper anything. It's also super thick now. But it's also thick. And if I was going to have a super thick phone, give me even more screen. Let's go. That's a good point. Right? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like physical keys on things. But phones are kind of uh, like an almost a weird exception to that, in my opinion. Um, like if you're, if you're ever using a device like out in the wild, like if you're trying to interface with like a ticketing system or whatever else, not having physical keys can be really annoying. I also find a lot of like clicker style devices, if they don't have physical keys, they just suck. Oh yeah, 100%. like across the board. I mean, unless they had like Apple 3D Touch level haptics or something like that, Which fi fine, like fine. But they no don't. No way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, but but the phone's keyboard is actually pretty good, and they have done things to try to bridge that gap, like you were talking about, um, where like it'll 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 almost feel like you're actually pressing a key because of how it'll like vibrate and whatever else. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just do the swipe texting. You just wiggle your finger around, and you're done. Yeah, I'm I'm convinced that that's probably faster, but I'm also convinced that I'm probably never going to do it. I am never going to swipe. Yeah. I'm actually not convinced that it's faster. No? I've seen some people do it. It looks really fast, but uh, the second I try to do it, I'm just like, Bleh, I can pretty sure I can slap around this keyboard a lot faster. Yeah, and... Um like I, I, I use like my my prediction has been trained on my phone for years and years and years and years now. So the amount of Fair. stuff that it will auto and maybe part of my problem is that I input a lot of acronyms and stuff. A lot of what I talk about is tech. So it's it's things that you've like kind of added to the library it's, or whatever. It's things that would take forever to input manually. Um, so even though I'm a fast typist on my phone. I still end up using autocomplete for a lot of the terms that I end up talking about because um, it's just faster when you have to capitalize a bunch of crap or um, when it's not a real word or whatever the case may be. So using swipe while also selecting predicted input words is not something that I think I would be very good at. It's also just a learning curve. Like, okay, what? So I'll be 4% faster after being 20% slower for six months or something. It's like, yeah, is this really worth the investment? Like, I've seen a lot of people argue, okay, yeah, if, you, if you're serious about input, you should use Dvorak. And uh, I'm like, yeah, that's nice. But with QWERTY, I'm anywhere in the range of 110 to 130 words per minute. I can literally transcribe an entire meeting with someone while conducting the meeting without thinking about it at all. That has a value to me. Like, you know, you ask how I do something like the Micron factory tour. That's how I, I, I transcribe because it's, it's more than like I could just record it. Right. But then I have to go back and read it by transcribing it. The act of creating that transcription tells me where all of those things are in the document. It allows me to format it the way that I want instead of just relying on some stupid app yeah. to hopefully know who was talking to who and which words mattered and which ones didn't. Um, yeah, sure, Dvorak, great. It sounds great. I like, I like efficiency, but it is more efficient for me to keep my brain completely free of thinking about how to type and focused on a conversation or like a meeting that I'm sitting in. My, my thing with Dvorak, I've always been very interested in it. But I just use other people's computers sometimes. And I don't want to go up to the keyboard and just be like, uh, I'm like tripping over my own fingers. I want to be able to use it properly. Yeah. Next one. Sure. Uh, next one here is from Gregory. Dear Li Luke slash Linus, you get a call at 2 a.m. It is Linus slash Luke. And they have been arrested. Before they say anything, what is your first thought as to why? Um, she was naked. Public indecency. <laughs> that's it. You think that's it? Yeah. I mean, what else? I mean, what are your vices? Like, it would have it would have had to be nudity. <laughs> what? Like, I don't know why you were showing off. I don't know who <laughs> dared you. 
But you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, hmm. No, I don't think he's like coked out. I just, I just think that <laughs> it was a, uh, well, that's where Twitch chat went with it. Are both of these are very common of, uh, occurrences, I take it. I both, just, I just both think, of these. What are you talking I, th about? I think new, I think Luke's just like cool with being nude. I don't think no. it's a big deal to him. And I think that, you know, some prude cop sees him <laughs> being all nude somewhere where he shouldn't be. And I, I guess, I guess <laughs> Jaden, come on. <laughs> Jaden's like, he literally does this all the time. It's the most Luke thing. Come on. Uh, I, I guess, like, peeing out in nature is a form of public indecency. It sure is. Yeah. So, I mean, it could happen. Yeah. I've done that for sure. I'm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, assault. What? <laughs> Have you ever seen me hit anyone? Anything? <laughs> No, but I could see a reality where. Uh, oh, yeah. I see where you're going. I don't with know how this. far down that conversation I want to yeah, go. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> it's got very real. Uh, <laughs> next up. I love leaving that vague. That's amazing. We could give some like hints, but I love leaving it vague. <laughs> Oh I don't want man, to know. that's amazing! Yeah, let's move on. Next one. All right, Ian. Uh, happy Friday, Luke and Linus. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what tech related job do you think will take the longest for AI to take over? Well, this one's just for Luke. Oh, pfft. dude, I it have is no not. Idea. Oh, also get owned. The longest for AI to take over. I was going to say developing AIs, but that's not even true. They're no. like already working on yeah. each other and stuff. Yep. It's Tech. really tough. I think if you knew the answer to this, Tech. you Job. would probably find some way to get extremely rich over the next little bit, because that is a question that like everyone is trying to figure out right now. Um, How about like the business engagement side of tech? So, so the, the actual like schmoozing that takes place where companies work on integrating each other's tech and making deals, I think that while you and I might go, well, they could easily take over that by just writing emails. It's already integrated into Office and it's integrated into Gmail or whatever. I think you and I both know that even though it's not really our thing, a lot of business is done over drinks over shared experiences totally is, yeah. um whereas you and i issue all forms of social contact um so we don't really get it <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of times that i've encountered people in my career where i would send an email um and get ghosted or get blown off and then I would run into them at a party at CES or something, say literally exactly the same f***ing thing. Then bridge that connection and, and that's a deal. And all of a sudden they're down to do a deal because we hung out or something. And I'm kind of like, that's f***ing stupid. <laughs> um, yeah. But I don't, I can't change that. I, yep. I, I, I have to play the game, right? I, I, I think it will be... My, my jump is like infrastructure maintenance. Because, hmm. so like the actual hardware maintenance, yeah. or okay, Get my uh, job's safe. Because you could <laughs> for now, for now. Because uh, you can you can like automate a lot of that with robots, and you can do whatever. But what if that's the problem? What mm. if the like networking that connects everything goes down for whatever reason? Sure. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I think those were both valid answers, and we should not be angry with each other anymore tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it when mom and dad fight. <laughs> well, that's why I was trying to tell everyone to, like, just don't... You guys still love each other, there's no, right? There's it's no, not like... my fault. Did I do a bad job producing? I'm sorry. It's Dan's fault. Yes, it's Dan's it's fault, 100%. Dan's fault. He's the this wedge is, that came between us. This is the us. one thing that we agree on, is that it's your fault. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, next up is from Casey. Linus and Luke, what's something you've always wanted to talk about on stream, but no one has ever asked? 
What has no one ever asked Man, a, me? A lot of hard questions. People ask me some weird stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, like what have you never been asked about on stream? Uh, yeah, and I mean, like maybe not technically stream, but so much of my life has been lived in front of the camera. Yes. Like a lot of topics. You know what? I think this would have been a lot easier if we had never done the roast. A lot of things were talked about about me in public that, that was a pretty transparent yeah 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 i mean if you read between the lines correctly especially with the people who know me best pretty much all my dirty laundry's out there baby <laughs> yeah like i i feel like this and the degree to which you have been on camera more is absurd so like yeah, I don't think there's much and it's like this is what we've wanted to talk about and the the problem with that is like that No one's ever asked like we don't just talk about what people ask Yeah, no one's ever asked. I mean I don't really have a life um, <laughs> No, really though. What do I what do I do? I mean, let's walk. Let's let's go through my week, right? So, you know one day a week I, I, <laughs> I, I, technically I'm off Mondays. So on Mondays, um, I usually attend the all hands Monday morning meeting after which I will usually sit down and like look at a couple of emails and stuff or whatever. Cause I'm already at my computer anyway, <laughs> after which I have our writer's meeting, which is about two hours. <laughs> He's off on Mondays. That's why I looked weird when he said I'm off on Mondays. I'm like, yeah, sure. Dude. After which people usually have a couple of things to follow up with me from the meetings after which um, I have an activity with my kids. So I do manage to do that. Okay, and then cool. I eat, when I'm done that, I eat dinner. So like... <laughs> yeah, we were at the end of the day, basically, when he said that. So work and kids. All right. So then let's pick another day of the week. Um, <laughs> I go to work. And then I go home and I eat. And then I go to badminton or I do things with my kids. And you talk about badminton on the show. Yeah, so I talk about my kids. I talk, talk about, about badminton. I talk about work. That is my entire life. Um, and then, like, there's my SO, right? We go to work together. We play badminton together. We raise our kids together. It's like, what, do you want me to talk about the <laughs> one thing we do that isn't that? Hey. Well, I, mean, I mean, it's part of that. But people have definitely asked, so... It doesn't mean it doesn't qualify. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, also fair. Uh, and for me, all the other things that I do, I often find some way to work into the show if I actually feel like talking about it. Like I've talked about the workouts and weight loss stuff that I've been doing and yada, yada, yada. So like, I don't know. I don't think there's much, to be honest. <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff that I have no interest in talking about and have not talked about. And yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, this makes me feel a lot better about myself. Cool. Because you have a life? No, because I'm on the same page as both of you. Oh, okay. I thought, <laughs> you, were just, I thought you were just slamming us. No, I would, that was the intention, to make you think that. Um, okay, <laughs> next up. New to the channel, and I gotta say, your company is the coolest nerds I know. Nice. I have no clue about nice. computer technology, but because of LTT, I have learned so much. Question, what's your favorite thing about Luke and Dan? Oh, is this to me? I think so. My favorite thing. Did you really curate a question asking my favorite thing about you? Apparently, apparently it's. I love it's, your dry wit and your uncanny uh, willingness to do whatever the f you damn well please. <laughs> there. Yeah, get owned. It's addressed to all of us, so I think Dan has to also say what his favorite thing about <laughs> Luke and Dan is. Yeah, I don't even want to know mine. Just, just what's your favorite thing about you? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I've never been. I've never had to think about this before. Wow, this is getting like deep talk now. What's your favorite thing about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. You can find something. I believe my ability to be interested in anything. That's cool. That's a good mm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's lame, but whatever. Wholesome. That's good. Okay, so yeah. hold on. I got to do Luke now. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Um, I was hoping we were going to dodge this bullet. My f Yeah, I saw how you tried to redirect <laughs> that, but I was right there with you. I think my favorite thing about Luke is how oh boy. we... 
either mind meld <laughs> or <laughs> or completely disagree we're, we're and still vision. we still manage to make it work yeah that's what that's what gives us the dynamic that you guys like so much i think is we'll go yeah 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 yes no wait <laughs> <laughs> i mean we saw it we saw it today right like it's um i my my the people i tend to be most successful surrounding myself with are the ones that um generally are aligned with me but when we're not aligned make me better and so that's if if i was going to give you if i was going to give you a one line how to pick an so um your bff you know, a business partner, someone that you're in it with for the long haul. That's got to be it. I had a, I had a, I had a conversation with someone recently about how they, they work with their, with their partner and, but it's not, it's not their workplace. They don't own it. They're just, oh, they both, just both work. They're the both place. employees at the same place. That's scary. And one of them, uh, this is the, this is a, a male, female relationship. Yeah. I'm talking to the male in this relationship. Yeah. The male in this relationship is in a leadership role. Higher. They don't directly report to each other, though. No. Okay. But but the org chart. If you're in a meeting, is the this person is above, and would would be placed in a situation at times where like if that person is super derailed or off topic or talking about whatever, they have to get them back on board. Mm. Complicated. <laughs> and I, I, I brought up, I was like, you know, the, I feel like you should try to dodge it in every which way you can. And Linus and I are not in a romantic relationship, but I have never found a situation where I've been in this type of role where I've been able to be like really good bros with someone and it's worked before. Right. Especially with someone else who will also enthusiastically defend their position. Because <laughs> I do that. Uh, yeah. And when two people do that, it's it, not super common that you can... Avoid bad conflict. Yeah. Good and conflict I've, is okay. Yeah. I feel like we've done a pretty good job of that. Yeah. And that's cool. But it helps that we're mostly aligned. Yes. So we don't have to have conversations like, well... How, how are we going to run a forum without, uh, you know, uh, s s sound high volume sound ads, ads like all over it. around the screen, try to dodge your mouse and yeah. all this type of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we, we don't, we don't, we, we have maybe, okay. Maybe, maybe instead of just alignment, maybe I should have said similar principles would have been a good way to kind of phrase that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's definitely, it takes tending. <laughs> I mean, you guys got to witness it today. Yeah, yeah, because you have to. You can't go to bed angry, right? Like, yeah. it's you got to uh, resolve it at some point. It's tough, and sometimes the resolution is, you know what? You're a lot more passionate about this than I am. Um, I guess we're going to need to back down, or I'll need to back down. And sometimes the resolution is, um, I actually just really do need you to understand my point here. <laughs> you need to shut the f up for a second. <laughs> and sometimes it's in between, yeah. right? Yeah, but you got to figure it out. I mean, Yvonne and I have had some some really tough conversations. I mean, especially, man, the stakes of everything are so low once you're raising kids together. Mm. Everything else is just like, eh. it's like, what's work? It's like, what, money? Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 money matters, especially when you've got 100 plus mouths to feed. If we don't make money, what's Dan going to eat? <laughs> right so the, the stakes are, are are really high but with a child the stakes are exponentially higher oh, yeah. it's their future it's the future of everyone they ever interact with if you if you if you are willing to sort of put that burden on yourself right it's That's the future lot, of yeah. it's the future of their spouse their their kids their kids kids right like it's their life success yeah and their life success as 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 small or as great as it might be could impact the world, right? Like there's the, the stakes are, are so high. Um, and so it's just like when we're making decisions about how to parent, 
Ooh. Those are way more intense conversations yeah. than how are we going to organize this department for best efficiency? Here's my idea. Here's your idea. We disagree. You know what? Who the f cares? Let's try yours. And if it doesn't work, f it. we'll try the other one because f like whatever. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, it's all solvable, right? It's all it, 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 what we make a little more money or we make a little less money. We'll observe performance, potentially pivot. Yeah, whereas like with kids, well, you get one shot. Yeah, and there's certain actions that you can do that might not seem like that big of a deal, but even if done once, will like never be forgotten and yada yada you yada. You can yada, traumatize yada. a living being. And there's no like, if that person deeply disagrees with your action, they... So much resentment can blossom out of that scene. And you're, you're always their dad. She's always their mom. So like... Yep. They can't just like quit and go to another company and not care. Stakes are real high. Stakes are real there's a, high. There's a form of that, obviously, but there's I mean, like... Yeah, the emanciation or whatever it's called. Yeah, like there's there's things that you can do, but there's no, some amount of... emancipation? I don't know. Emanciation is where you're like unhealthy, I think. You just run away. Yeah. Um, and I think emancipation, yeah. But like that's not easy and that's yeah. potentially emotionally damaging and all yeah, that type sure. of stuff. Like it's, it's just very... And it could be worse than it was, you know? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mystical and float plane chat. My kids are basically loving and very feral. How do I fix? Um, well, usually when I want to fix a feral creature, I go to the vet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we can move on. Speaking of ways to affect their lives. Next. Okay. Uh, do you think that the size of LTT is damaging to smaller tech channels? Some smaller tech channels have expressed in the past that they aren't doing very well and that it's hard to compete with LTT. Sorry? I, I think I would have to wager with how algorithmic stuff works. Hey, wait, hold on a second. No, we got to back up for a second. Luke dodged answering about himself. What? I don't think so. Thank you, chat. You didn't say your favorite thing about you. Oh, boy. Thanks, chat. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to switch over to Luke Cam here. Why? I don't know. And you thought this was a bad question. I don't know. I feel like all the things that I like about myself have very intense downsides. <laughs> like, I like that I go hard, but then I take a long time to recover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, like they, they all have super big. I like negatives. that I'm really loyal, but sometimes I do things that are kind of dumb and not in my own best interest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, if it if it helps at all, Luke, the answer that I gave is also incredibly damaging every single day. <laughs> uh, I think it's probably the second one Linus mentioned. Uh, I I I like that I stick with people and ideas, but. That can also suck a lot. <laughs> like, uh, going back, going way back, you should not have stuck with the NCIX no. tech tips paradigm. No. That was actually stupid. Yeah. Like, you had so much potential. I can see why your parents were mad. Oh, yeah. You had all this potential, like, super bright future, and you were wasting your time falling asleep behind the camera at some <laughs> tech store with this, like, guy who's not even very senior at the company or anything. Just like, what are you even, what are you even doing, son? I had, I had job offers that were twice as much as the starting wage um, at, at this company, let alone, yeah. let alone NCX. Uh, but that was, yeah, that was, I don't know. But I like that. And look, I'm happy with how that resulted. So, like, I don't know. So we learned nothing. <laughs> I'll f***ing do it again. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, that line right there is also a big part of me. I don't, which, which sometimes is great. And other times it's terrible. I don't know. Uh, all, a lot of... <laughs> I, have you ever done those, like, personality test things? Mm, uh, probably at some point, not recently. Though. I rank like 99th or 0th percentile in everything. <laughs> <laughs> no half measures loose. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I've even had other people take the test as if they were me. Yeah. Because I'm like, am I just like skewing this or whatever? And yeah. they're like, whoa, <laughs> it ended up on like the far reaches of every category. And I'm like, cool. I don't know how comfortable I am with this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know. There's, there, I don't, I don't, there's things I think of positively about myself, but 
all of those things have downsides and i'm just i'm okay with it at this point it's fine <laughs> i'm over it yeah all right sorry can you uh, read that question again um some smaller tech channels have expressed in the past that they aren't doing very well due mm. to the size of ltt and it's hard to compete um do you think that's damaging to them um well what do you want do you want me to like not make the best content we can make what is it about our size that's problematic i guess would be my question because if anything our size has felt like rising tide a that we have le we have legitimized a lot of the forms of monetization that smaller creators take for granted that didn't exist or that were a source of huge audience blowback back when we first started doing it. We broke it. ground on ad spots. Uh, we, we, we have legitimized advertising in the tech YouTuber space. You're welcome. And I don't just mean this as like, look how out of touch and arrogant Linus is, but no, for real. Like we, we shifted advertising budgets from written media and forums and like traditional legacy magazines TV ads. Um, from many of the brand partners that these smaller tech creators are working with today. We fought through that, getting it reallocated to YouTube and everyone now gets to enjoy the fruit of that. We weren't the only ones, not even a little bit, but we were very much the tip of the spear. Um, I'm not gonna apologize for any of that because a lot of that, that, that rising tides thing that Luke was talking about, a lot of that ecosystem simply doesn't exist if, or would have taken longer, or wouldn't be as mature if we hadn't taken the, 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 been brutalized by the audience for a lot of the things that we've done that are now just accepted as common practice. Um, because no, I don't think they were bad. I think they were fine. I think people just weren't used to it. So, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna apologize for, for, you know, killing it um, over the years. Um, I think that in some ways it's easier than ever to break out on YouTube to be discovered. In some ways it's harder. I've talked about how I think it's harder to become a mega sized channel and yes. Mr. Who's the Boss is the only evidence I've seen in recent years that you can even still do it at all. But I absolutely did it. But I would also like to point out that we've become a very big ship and we've become kind of difficult to steer. And that's one of the things that we're trying to address is because it can be a competitive disadvantage for us to be a jack of all trades, master of none sometimes. And when something breaking happens, who's the first one on top of it? Is it the, the, the one person band creators that are like, I see this now and I am going to pick up my phone and go now. Are, are they the ones who are able to, to jump on top of highly topical uh, trends or is it us where we have to go and have a meeting about our production schedule and our release schedule and the availability of our shooting team? Or to be topical for this show, the ethics of potentially covering that topic we also try to we are a large company with people that have scheduled hours so like people don't work weekends what if something happens on a weekend we simply cannot what if something happens deal with it on a late night on a wan show we might get less coverage of that thing than other people because those people make reaction content yep to it and then we don't make anything about it until monday because people are off on the weekends it's uh yeah, I don't know. Sir Benny on Twitch says, I believe the excuse, using the excuse of look at the advantage of the competition instead of thinking what could I improve isn't exactly productive. What are we supposed to improve? Well, no, no, I, I, I think this is uh, from the other side. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like, yes, we have an advantage, but are you going to say we didn't fight for it? I mean, of course we did. And I'm, we got a little lucky. Right place, right time, for yep. sure. Yep. But we also fought tooth and nail for every part of it. So I test that. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna apologize for succeeding. Um, I'm never going to I'm never gonna try to do anything other than my best. 
I would also argue that we absolutely feel the ups and downs of the platform as well. And I think this is specifically targeting, it yes. says in here, smaller channels. Uh, so it's possible that there's there's a line, right? Of like, this is the line of acceptable dip. Like if we dip below a certain line and stay down there, we can't survive. Yep. Everybody's going to have that. If you're at a smaller channel, that line might be a lot higher because you're you're like average it's just it's more difficult to survive and when those dips happen they might feel a lot more intense because that line is higher and that sucks but like but we've also we've also taken a lot of risks along the way we've increased the the the, the minimum threshold by hiring so many people yeah. by aggressively reinvesting in content to the point where, um, you know, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna apologize for it. We we have to go hard because if we don't go hard, we die. And that dip is as dangerous to us as it is to you as an organization. Maybe not as dangerous to me personally because I I've, I've been doing this for a really long time. Like I've you know got the house and the car. You know, like, all right, cool barbecue. But. There's a lot of other people here that still gotta still gotta get some, and so we're not gonna take our foot off the pedal. Like f everyone inside this company is a smaller creator, so what? I should prioritize an external smaller creator over an internal I, smaller creator. One of my problems that? too is like, how would you even do that? I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah. I mean, here Luke was talking about dips. I don't know how well you guys can see this from there. Yeah, not too well. You know what? Here, let's um, let's switch to Linus Cam. Me, 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 me. Cool. So you know, this is our view chart over the entire lifetime of the channel, right? And so you can see here, me, 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 hockey stick moment. That was when I started focusing on content after we hired Nick as our like business guy. Um, and then it goes up and then it goes down. That period of like four months there, that, that like significant dip where we went from anywhere in the neighborhood of around three and a half to four million views a day down to a low of one and a half. No, oh, just over one. Um, I think that was over a span of about four months. Yeah, it was about three months. Terrifying. I thought that was it. I thought that was us succumbing to the curve it was, is what I call the, the rise and fall of every online creator. Um, then we had a long period, about a year of constant digging ourselves out of that. I, I, rem I still remember the all hands meeting that we had about that, where I basically went, well, I, I, I think, was that the one where I talked about just like being more authoritative and like, um, but being more focused and something something anyway we, we called an all hands meeting and basically talked about how we need to we need to do something we have to change and we need to start changing things immediately uh, like for today's upload we need to start changing things um i think that was um we we fo i can't remember because here's the thing i can't remember this meeting because we've gone through this a so here's a big dip then we recovered then we had another two month small dip where we went from like four million views a day down to like two in a little bit then we came back hard then we went from like four million views a day down to like two again and then now we're on an upswing that's got us now in the neighborhood of around like three and a half million views a day um and you gotta like yeah views aren't everything but they also kind of are because everything else is derived from how many views you can ultimately attract um it's yeah it's it's hard for everyone it's not easy and YouTube is constantly changing the rules. I mean, I express frustration as well. I'll send, I'll send emails oh, to yeah. our rep saying like, hey, we're really for sure not doing anything differently, but we're seeing very different results. Uh, what are you guys doing over there? Um, and it goes both ways. Like I sent one a, a few months back that I was like, hey, everything's coming real easy right now. <laughs> What's going on? This distresses me as much as a dip because I don't like unpredictability in the delivery of our content. So I, I don't know, maybe, I don't, I, I feel like this is one of those responses that's going to turn into some kind of controversy because I just, I, I'm uncaring or like I'm some kind of jerk or something, but I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we've, we've, it's we've collaborated with smaller creators yeah. many times. We're not we, trying to make it a negative space for anyone. Yeah. We we're very open about the way that we run our business. Um, and, and 
I think that's a benefit to creators small and large. You know, when we talk about things like how our revenue is broken down, if someone sees that and goes, holy smokes, like I am doing basically none of this and it's 20% of their revenue, I need to, I, I could chase that. Um, that's, some, that's the kind of stuff we don't have to talk about, but we do. Yeah. Next up. Okay. Um, I actually have an interjection here from Nick Light, who wanted to remind you that the Gone Fishing t-shirts will be gone on Monday. Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah, if you haven't gotten one, lttstore.com. Um, Sarah did a an absolutely bang-up job of the design for it with some help from the community. She did a long, like, five-hour stream showing the design process, which is really cool. Um, gone fishing. Here it is. Boop. <laughs> Super cute. Still love it. I, I will. I will love it forever. And if you are on float plane, you can go to exclusives. This is the beta site with all the filtering and everything, and the stream with. It's my. Why is my two finger scrolling not working? What is my computer doing? Oh yeah, no, I just cannot scroll this at all. Hmm. Anyway, uh, the stream is here. Don't worry, the site's working. Um, so yeah, I think it was like five hours and uh, and Sarah shows the entire design process for it. So that's a good reason to subscribe to Floatplane. Lots of good exclusives. All right, Dan, carry on. Okay, um, love the show. Tattoo artist here from Pennsylvania. J just curious if either of you had any tattoos, if any, that you would like to get. We're extremely boring people. It's true. I have piercings. You don't even have piercings. That's true. Hmm. I, I am more boring. Yeah, I used I to lose the race. Well, I used to be. I had my piercings you long before also, I even met you. Yeah, you also used to do crazy hair dye stuff and and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I had like pink hair, blue hair, green hair, blonde hair, black hair. I'm trying to think, what colors did I did I not do? I tried orange once. It didn't really go very well. It just faded out to blonde. It's like okay, well, I could have just dyed my hair blonde, then <laughs> saved myself some trouble, like a dye stage. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I spray painted my hair gold once, like with just actual like rattle can spray paint. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a vibe right there. Yeah, I like I like tattoos. I'm not against tattoos. I just um, every every one that I've thought of getting, I I kind of decide this this thing where I'm like, okay, if I still want it in a significant period of time, like at least a year, then I'll consider it. And every single time, I'm like, nah. <laughs> So it just hasn't happened. There's also stuff where like, what is it going to be? The only one that I thought of recently was uh, Takedo, my brother that passed away. Hmm. We have impressions of his like feet. Oh, that'd be cool. And I was yeah, thinking about getting them cool. on my shoulder where he used to stand. Yeah. But it would just look kind of random though. Budgie feet are just wise. Yeah. So there would just be two Y's on my shoulder. Yeah. Okay. So it would just look like I have stitches. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I like drew it on my shoulder and was like, yeah, nah, I don't know. I can remember him other, other ways. I don't know. I think tattoos look kind of cool, but it's like I would have to actually go out of my way to do a thing that is like body decorating. I mean... I'm I'm lucky that I have the motivation to like brush my teeth twice a day. Like it's <laughs> yeah. like maintaining maintaining my body is not something that I have traditionally. Okay, ma I shouldn't say not maintenance. Like I I exercise and stuff like that, but just decorating. Decor it's different. Yeah, it's different. Like all my all my piercings are from when I was in my early teens. Like yeah. I, I had all I had everything that I have plus the. I had one up at the top of the ear. I had an eyebrow ring, um, and I used to, like, dye my hair and stuff. That's all when I was, like, 13, 14. Yeah. And then after that, I just kind of... I, I, I don't even put gel in my hair anymore. I just just don't. <laughs> I haven't in a very long time. And I got to tell you, uh, Yvonne's not super into tattoos, so that's something. Okay. Um, yeah. And she's especially not into the kinds of tattoos that I've sort of floated with her anyway. Um, I thought about getting like my employment history and she's like, really <laughs> not my name. And I'm like, I mean, partner I names is so I offered to get wedding rings 
in tattoo yeah. and she didn't want to do it. So I've like, actually thought that's kind of cool because I, yeah. I, any form of jewelry, if I wear it, it's going to disappear. So like, this is still my original one. I'm shocked. I'm cause I take it off and play with it all the time. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Yeah. Okay. Up next is from Alexander. Hey Linus, as a biker, I have many favorite roads. My top one being the Beartooth Pass in Montana. Are there any roads that you love to ride? P.S. The GF is very happy about LDT's women's underwear. Nice. Cool. I'm glad they're a hit. They're actually selling shockingly well. Um, we haven't had like a ton of success with the women's apparel so far, uh, just because, you know, our demo being what it is, I think. Um, but the underwear, for whatever reason. Way better? Yeah, way better. Interesting. Yeah, go figure. Um, any roads you love to ride? You know, honestly speaking, I, I, n yeah, got to be careful with the N word, but I never ride for pleasure. Never. It's a, well, it's a word that you got to be careful about yeah. using. I mm -hmm. hate it here. I hate it. <laughs> it's got oh, hold such on. a brutal flashback. Oh my oh, goodness. Do, do I, do I have to ring the bell? <laughs> no. Um, I do, but I don't want to name them. <laughs> Okay. So that's, that's that. fair. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I, I just, uh, I, yeah, I commute on my, on my bike. I don't, I don't just like go, uh, pff, Ivan has been trying to get me to like go ride the sea to sky highway with him forever. Cause he's super into motorbiking now. And I'm just like, dude, when, when am I going to just, it's also like really long. When am I going to just go for three hours <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. and anything Yeah. like badminton? What helps a lot is that it's exercise. That's the justification. Just like burning gas, very difficult to justify for me. That all, that sounds like a, sorry, you didn't even say this, but my brain immediately went to like, like 90s, like don't do drug slogans. It's like, don't burn gas, burn calories. Because <laughs> you're like, Babington, yeah. I'm so boring, no. Luke. <laughs> That's okay. We don't have to be that. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We've been over it a bunch of times, but neither of us drink, neither of us smoke, neither of us do any drugs. We don't have tattoos. I gambled on crypto that one time. It was bad, so I'm over it. <laughs> yep. Well, at least you have vibrant lives outside of work. Yeah. Okay, up next is from John. <laughs> <laughs> up next is from John. Uh, Linus, do you still have that old aluminum case in a UV shrine? Um, no. Aluminum case. No, I sold it back when I got my TJ07. Oh, yeah. Um, next up is from Noah. Hey, two merch message questions, suggestions. Oh, actually, hold on one second. Oh, no. You know, it's funny. I, uh, yeah, I, you know what? I remember it being hard to part with, though. Even though I was constantly flipping stuff back then, I, I had put so much work into that case that i i didn't i didn't want to get rid of it but realistically my wife gave me one that was so much better and from her that i was never going to use it again and so i did eventually part with it but it made me think i have only had in my since i was 17 and got my built my first computer so in 20 years i have only had four cases the first one lasted, I think, less than a year. It was an Antec Landboy. The second one lasted like a few years. You guys saw it in its various yeah. um, forms in that video recently. Then I had the TJ07, and then now I have my Rackmount one. That's it. That's the whole thing. I don't change cases. Like like PC of Theseus kind of thing. Like just I change also all the think, stuff. Uh, in something that I get flamed for all the time, but you also are, is you could also look at the cars, the amount of cars you've had. Yeah. We're both a little cheap. Yes. <laughs> a case does not make the computer more faster, right? <laughs> so you don't need to get a new one every time. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably somewhat similar things with power supplies. You probably carried power supplies between builds from time to time. No, I was into like, Having a good power supply, okay. for sure. I mean, that's a fair... And power supplies were advancing really fast for a that's bit there. That's true. And there yeah. were, like, new connectors on the graphics cards that you didn't, like, really want to plug the two Molexes in. Yeah, and they weren't modular yet. You couldn't get third-party cables for them. 
Okay, I guess there was a bunch of Yeah, I upgraded my power supplies a fair bit compared to compared to cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to think. Yeah, all the cars I've ever owned. So my parents got me a 91 Jetta. Um, and that wasn't a freebie. The deal was that I drove all my siblings to anywhere they needed to go. I had four siblings. And we lived in the middle of butt f nowhere. So each one of those drives is long. So it was, it was, it was 17 minutes to anywhere. Did you have to way. pay for the gas for those drives? I don't think my parents gave me gas money. Yeah. Gas was a lot less expensive back then, though. That's true, but still. Um, and it was diesel which was less ah, lesser yeah. expensive. Yeah. Man, when I got my Civic, so then my next car was my Civic. When I got the Civic, I was like aghast how <laughs> at how much I was spending on fuel. Yeah. Because even... <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, because even though it's an efficient car or whatever, a gas car... Uh, compared to my diesel, I just I just assumed I was getting an like I didn't realize what the difference was. I'm not a car guy. And I I, I believe you were saying effectively this, but just to make it more straightforward, uh, the gap in price between diesel and gas was more back then, right? It was more initially. By the time I got the Civic, the gap wasn't as much. Okay. So I assumed that the that the fuel economy, like how many liters per 100 kilometers or whatever, was similar because I didn't really like look that closely at it. And then I didn't realize until I got the Civic, I was like, wow, I'm filling this thing up a lot. Uh, uh, I didn't realize how far off it was. Yeah. It's like, why isn't every car diesel? This is stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, then I got the Volt and then the Taycan. That's it. Four cars. Yeah. So I, and like, that feels like a lot to me, to be perfectly honest with you. It feels extravagant, but then... I don't think statistically it's that much. I see people yeah. that change their car a lot. Yeah. I'm like, oh, interesting. That, uh huh. And like, and sometimes they'll go from a new car to a new car. And in my mind... Not only did they buy a new car and buy a new car, but I feel like that one was still new. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. I do still win because I've only had two. Yeah, the Sunfire and uh, the other one. Yep. All right. Well, you win. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think you're, I think you're gonna get something cool. Maybe in the next like couple of years, I'd be surprised. The, I'd be surprised. The economy of it is going to have to make sense. Well, yeah, but I think that's going to come though. Yeah. Like if that happens, I'm for sure. I think it's going to be hard for you to resist the free charging. Yeah. In the long term. That is that is definitely as, like playing into the equation. As prices of used EVs come down, keep your eye on the provincial PST exemption for used EVs. Cuz that's a big deal. You'll have to wait a lot longer if that exemption goes away. Yeah. To get the same deal as you would get now, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just keep an eye on it. Yeah. That's all. That's <laughs> all. Hey, Whiskey Nerd 88, 1999 Sunfire Gang. <laughs> what year was yours? 1990. <laughs> 1990? Yeah. Nice. Well, I bought it like nice. not even that long after, like I, seven years after 1999. So, like, it would have been not even that old of a car. It would have been a lot more expensive at that point. I bought it for two grand. It was actually like, a really good deal. Yeah. Yeah. We knew you'd win. We all know you are cheaper than Linus. <laughs> he is cheap, though. Like, it's not... <laughs> About surprising things. Yeah. 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 Like, I will, I will spend shocking amounts of money on some things. Um, Luke is very upset about how much I'm apparently willing to throw in a fire. Um, oh, to build an automatic scoring system <laughs> in the badminton gym that I'm building. <laughs> Very upset. It's a little nuts. It sounds fun. I am admitting it's gonna be so cool. I am admitting I am admitting that it sounds fun, but it's like kind of nuts. I there is I know there's a word for what it is. Don't. I, it escapes me right now. Don't. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, man, that totally threw me completely <laughs> off. Uh, oh, right. Are, can, are we saying what it... So we're just saying automated scoring system? Yeah. Well, I mean, we can talk more about that. There, there, is, there is ways to monetize it. It's just not a system of monetization that I probably anyone here has ever done. No. And like, are we going to do it? Probably not. I feel like no. Yeah, no. 
because there's like probably more profitable things that we could work on. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we're not going to try to monetize it properly. No. So, uh, but it'll be really cool. It's going to be pretty cool. You're okay. Your argument about getting videos out of it. I don't think is legitimate. I'm going to get videos out of it. How many? Some, not many. Two? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Because you got to remember. Because you can't saturate the audience with badminton videos. No, but they're not badminton videos. When we, when we build, like, a machine vision system to, to track the shuttle or whatever, um, there will be a video about, like, the hardware setup. What? The acronym. Did you do that on purpose? No. Automated scoring system? <laughs> no, but we have to call it that. We definitely have to call it that. Someone, I, that was, I didn't notice that. Someone in Float Plane Chat pointed that out. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> when I make a video about my ass, <laughs> uh, you guys no, will watch it. No strawberry this time. No yeah. strawberry. Um, okay. And then we do a follow up video on the like. The 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 machine the machine vision like GPU setup in the rack mm. that powers you know all the courts or whatever. I can definitely think of like maybe an introduction to the project video where you talk about capabilities and like yep. what our plan is and show the hardware for the plan yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And then like first major milestone. Yeah. And then completion. No, no, no. There's oh no. There's lots of stuff in between. Okay, so what about the other cameras that are going to be on every court? We could make a system about like how do you build the ultimate OBS like monster? How many people watch OBS content? Yeah, but I can title it in a way people they'll they'll f watch it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll watch it. All right. So we build this like monstrous OBS machine that can handle ingest from like fourteen simultaneous streams. And it, we like cobble it together with like firmware hacked GeForce cards so that you can overcome the the NVENC encoding limit or whatever. Like that's content. I see. That's my, my content. Problem is, my problem is there's there's no like. I talked to Yvonne about it, and she was she was like asking me questions about like like do you think it's worth it? Blah 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 blah. She's asking things about like my opinion on it, and I'm like no, I can't. Like there's no. Like, I can't sit here and argue with him about the efficacy because he just wants it. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he wants it to be really good. So it's going to, like, you know, the whole, the, 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 the quality cheap, good, whatever. fast, the, cheap. Yeah, the triangle. Like, he wants it to be really good. <laughs> he doesn't care that much about fast. But like he wants it to be really good, and he want and he's definitely gonna want it to exist. The amount of care that he seems to have about it being able to be profitable, it making sense, all this other kind of stuff is super low. I so love like, that you guys have meetings about me. <laughs> you told me to. Well, okay. What I what you said was, am I good to post the job posting? And I said, well, those that has to be cleared by Yvonne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? I have to have a meeting with Yvonne. But like, yeah, I, there's no argument that I can make that's gonna change his mind. Because like, what am I? What am I gonna debate him on? Yeah, Nerdum says if I got a hundred thousand dollar gold controller passed Yvonne, I can get a badminton scoring system. Yeah, like, I... I mean, she's very sensible and she's like, she's great. She'll make sure that I don't, you know, lead us into financial ruin or whatever. But I wouldn't do that anyway. And she pretty much lets me do things if they're. Well, this is pretty stupid. Um... I was going to say if they're not completely stupid, but I think this is completely stupid. But I, yeah. like, I'm really passionate about the sport, right? It's like, not. It's not not cool. Yeah, it's super cool. It's super cool. Yeah. It just like. And then we'll make a video when we upgrade it. It just does like doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. And I don't mean sense in regards to like like it's it seems to be feasible. That's not the sense I'm talking about. I mean like, financially or pretty much any other way. It's just fun and cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that the whole idea here? And that's fine. Yeah. My my biggest thing when I was talking to Yvonne about it and when I was talking to you about it is just you need to be super aware of that. <laughs> if you're completely okay with the idea that is just fun and cool and this is not going to make any money and it doesn't make any sense in any other way, then I don't care. Yeah, let's do it. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Nice.
Yeah. Okay, so then let's talk about the scope. Uh, the minimum viable product is that with user intervention, so with user confirmations and prompts and or maybe uh, gestures, like there's certain things that are going to be there, tough, like how to start the game. Everyone might have to like go like this or something. And, and serving, because you were pointing out, yeah. like sometimes a, a point might be scored, but then yeah. the person might just like hit it back. And, and yep. somebody countered to me like, okay, but the, the system would know the rules of the game, so they would know that that person wasn't supposed to serve. As long as our, as long as our tracking system for where it lands is perfect, and as long yeah. as the humans don't disagree with it and decide the score is something and else. And as long as the humans don't screw up, maybe they hit it back and they were supposed to serve because they thought the other side was supposed to serve. Which happens. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, sorry, that was, that, that was my point. So I can throw pretty much me. guarantee I have done that. Like, yep. So that's it. There's a lot of there's a lot of edge cases and issues. So we have a bunch of ideas. Like one of them is having a, a, a tablet, or I have actually kind of changed the scale of that for the testing court. I want it to be a TV, yeah, because I want it to be like impossible to ignore. Basically, I don't want like a small little thing going on. And I think you should be able to read it from far away. Oh, I should like have that. clarified. Every court is going to have two TVs, yeah. so that both sides can see it easily. Yeah, though the tablet is just to interact to with and touch it. Okay, case. sweet. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we're on the same uh, page there. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then like a, a, a like shrouded light thing. So if it needs to give a notification mm. or if, if there's something that like you need to address this now. One of those x-ray machine ones with the green, yellow, and red stripe. Basically, yeah. Yeah. So like, like, uh, like uh, you could use the different lights to indicate things. So that you don't have to try to look up and read what's going on. If you see it flash one green light as the birdie hits the ground, yeah. you're like, yeah, someone scored a point. Boop means someone scored a point. Nice. Sweet. I don't need to check in on what's going on. Stuff like that. Because the first version is going to have a lot of uh, edge case issues for sure. Yeah. So then after that, it should be able to fully automatically score keep by using machine learning to tell what is going on. Which is going to be really hard. That's tough. It's and then, a lot of in the longer term, I want it to track who's playing against who and the score and people's play styles, so we can build a matchmaking system and build a like a universal ladder system and individual people's performance regarding to you. You can't. I don't think it's I want stats for nerds. Super reasonable to do things like, hey, your uh, at least right now. Who knows? Maybe someday. Maybe in three years when we get to this stage, it's significantly easier because software development does that and maybe we can figure it out. But I don't think we should really consider the idea of like exactly matching people's arm movement and giving them coaching feedback. But no. you could do things like, hey, uh, the back left-hand quadrant, every time it gets shot there, you have a lower percentage chance of successfully returning than any other quadrant. So if you were going to book some coaching time... That might be something you want to focus on. Still not going to make it profitable. No. Um, but yeah, pretty much. Um, and I, I think that information would be really interesting. You're also talking about um, like similar to a chess ranking system, yeah. like ranking people inside. So you can, you can almost like set up like, hey, you're similarly ranked to me on this thing. Do you want to show up at a similar time yeah. and play each other? Well, I told you I wanted a phone app so that it could be like, hey, your rival just checked in. They beat There's, you the, the last three times you've played. Do you want to get in the car and go uh, yeah, go, there, go there try and challenge be, them? There's some interesting stuff there with like, you know, there's a lot of interesting well, things Well, yeah, there. I mean, privacy. Obviously, people yeah. would have to opt into something like yeah. that. We, we'll figure out all the It'd details. It would have to be a pretty overt, like, hey, this is what we're going to do. Make sure you're aware of this before yeah. you just automatically click the OK. Yes. I think that's sweet. That would be freaking awesome. Oh, that's sick. But I yeah. just I know some people would maybe feel weird about it. Yeah. Um, I think you could also well, have can stuff play somewhere else where you like customize your visibility levels, so sure. you could like make friends while you're there. Absolutely. And be like, yeah, I want oh, well, to add you to my thing. It would have to be a friend. Like I said, it's like someone you played with three times recently. Yeah. yeah. Like like that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Someone who is like friended. Okay. No. No. Not like randoms. Yeah. So it shouldn't yeah. be just everyone at the court. Or I don't even think it should necessarily automatically be people that you have played against. No. But, oh, well, that's right. That was like that was my other. implication. What's your what's your what's your <laughs> what's your <laughs> oh what now? So the system's called ass. Because it's automated scoring system. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, what's your ass tag? Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> you should sell sweatpants. And it has people's like handles on the butt. 
That's actually pretty good. Add me, bro. What's your handle? Let me just turn around. <laughs> Sorry, can I just get a picture of your ass so that I can import it into my phone? QR code? <laughs> QR code right in the middle? Let me just take a picture of your ass. Oh my goodness. Oh man. So, yeah, we need to hire people for that, I guess. Um, yeah, and I know that you guys don't care about the badminton side of it, but that's not what the content will be. The no, content yeah. will be focused on the tech side of it. Because the badminton is just an excuse to build cool tech. There's just going to be very significant periods of time where there's nothing to show off. Because, like, the, this field is very complicated. This field is very uh, rife with not necessarily knowing the problems that you're going to run into. Yeah. Things like that. Um, well, I fully expect it to go from zero to, like, holy crap, this kind of works really fast. And then go from, like, holy crap, this kind of works to... It works somewhat consistently Enough over to be worth using. a really long period of time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, I suspect you'll be able to get, like, uh, people's skeletal models and tracking them pretty quickly. But, like, you're going to walk too close to someone and you're going to become one <laughs> monster of bones and, like, all yeah. these things. There's going to be lots of, uh, lots of issues. Tons of issues. It's going to be, like, basically unusable for an extremely long time. And he knows that, so it is what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that job posting is not up, but I will be making job postings for machine vision. I drink way too much on this show now. It, it also it also is going to need, as he was also referencing, uh, a website and an app. So uh, there will also be that that needs to be made. Uh, but based on what Jaden has already said in the live chat, uh, yeah, I don't know. The, the plan is not really to use like people that we already have for this because everything we're already doing needs uh, like more help not less so we can't really divert to this thing um but Jaden just posted an unhappy face and I don't like it when Jaden's sad <laughs> so we'll figure something out um but yeah the idea is not really to lean on the people that we have um yeah I don't know no, Jaden, I need you. Um, is this after lab or sooner? Well, I mean, what are you talking about necessarily? So like the hiring is like, I might, I don't know, these postings might go up within the next like couple of weeks. It more depends on uh, like the financials and accounting and all that kind of stuff than it depends on me. Um, but it, it being like usable, like, no, the lab website's going to be up before this for sure uh i the timeline that i gave linus i was like i don't know i'm expecting it's going to be closer to three years than two <laughs> for it to be like good um because i i talked to some people on the staff here um one of them was jake danes the other one i don't 100 percent know if if uh they want themselves being like named and stuff on wan so i will refrain from doing that right now but they're both the the second person is specifically in like machine ver vision and machine learning and stuff here and they're very good and then there's jake danes who i don't know if i can say specifically anything because he just works on as far as i can tell literally everything um but i i sat down with both of them and we had a conversation about feasibility and stuff like that and they quoted a, a certain amount of devs in a certain amount of time and then um that was a lot of people and not really that much time. So we're opting for probably less people, but more time. Are you still talking about how dumb I am? <laughs> <laughs> I never said you were dumb. <laughs> Don't call me out like that, Luke. <laughs> what? I never said anybody was dumb. Um, I just said it's not a financially viable direction. Yeah. But, but it is fun. It's yeah. interesting. Like, I'm not, I'm not completely against it. Gotta live a little. Yeah. Conrad, just me, three days, I got this. There you go. Nice. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty accurate, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be extremely hard to do. If you think it would be easy, I don't think you've fully thought about all the problems. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's going to be, ex be very extraordinarily difficult. challenging. I think it's going to be pretty fun, though. Like, even the early version, like, I would want to play on that court, even if we just did 
scorekeeping through verbal communication but like you just watch like what it's doing and i think especially for the early versions it would be funny to like put up like what it's like i'd want to see the the skeleton the models yeah. yeah like i just i oh, just think sure. it'd be really entertaining i don't know yeah 100 like, percent. like I, I i like pass behind you quickly or something we become this like giant bone mass yeah, and then it like, like <laughs> untangles and yeah, so yeah like, i'd probably get distracted <laughs> but it would be fun like Ooh, focus on the game i'd also love, like we we talked about how the the immediate computation if we try to do some complicated things might be really difficult but we might be able to do like scorekeeping real time. Yeah. Performance rating later. Oh yeah, way later. So, but MVP is scorekeeping. Yeah. Oh, I don't mean timeline wise. Oh. I mean computationally. So like oh. while you're playing, it's keeping score and it's recording the match. I understand. But no, it, I want it all in real time. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Blast. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. It can crunch overnight or whatever if it comes to I that. just don't know the feasibility of any of this stuff. Um, I put in enough power <laughs> for every court to run. Hold on, let me think for a second. For every court to run about three GPUs. Okay. I mean, I still don't know at all the feasibility yeah. of that. But that's that just I just machine learning and machine machine vision stuff. The computation required balloons really rapidly. Yeah. Um, okay, that's fair. So, like, uh, I don't know. Um, but it's done a lot of computer vision. Yeah, like, I, it's, I don't know. I, we'll figure it out. We have, we have barely dipped toes in thinking about the idea. Like, this is not, yeah, don't worry about it. 34090s, honestly, by the time this thing was, like, working, working, we're going to be past 4000 series. Oh, yeah. Like, it's gonna take a while okay um but if we can do real-time everything that's great i'm not saying i'm not trying to commit to anything right now i have no yeah. idea but there's a there's a potential reality where your like performance data comes later yeah um it, it, it might even be able to use the local stuff for like the scorekeeping and yada 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 and then it like offshores yep some of the data to, to compute elsewhere. Well, given that we're Who planning knows? to run la know. lands and stuff there, we'll probably have like a decent connection coming in. So if we have to send yeah, out... I have no idea. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I think it'll just be cool. I think it'll be a fun thing to work on. Um, but yeah, it's not... It's far from profit-driven. Ace all. Archer says, want to run it on FPGAs? I work on doing machine learning on FPGAs for particle accelerators <laughs> in my day job. <laughs> nice. Uh no, but that nice. sounds sick. You should probably keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. All right. What's next? Oh, uh, this next one's from Noah. Hey, two merch message slash questions. First is, will you ever make an ARGB mouse pad? Noah. Get it? Because that's his name. Oh, Noah. was it? Oh. Yeah, uh, probably not. I, I think that... Um, I don't like them. There's a spicy take. Yeah. Well, the issue is that we've never found a good diffusion material that um, manages <laughs> pretty consistent brightness all the way around the track. And I'm just not happy with it. Next is the screwdriver. Could you use the same material the bits are made of for the shaft? I guess you could, but you wouldn't want to necessarily. There's different kinds of strength for metal. Um, some things you want to be harder even if it means they're more brittle, while other things you don't mind if they're softer because it's better for them to be more malleable. You want them to, them to fail before the other piece. Uh, we're, and we're definitely using industry standard materials for our, for our shaft and for our bits. <laughs> okay, next up is from Rick. Hey, Luke and Linus, just messed up my merch message on my order. So here's a gift card too. Linus, have you ever had any interest in testing medical stuff like ultrasounds that connect to tablets? I mean, it's really cool, but it's so, so niche. And sketchy. And like, yeah, am I qualified to evaluate the quality of an ultrasound? Yeah, like what? No. I don't want to test that. The only time we thought about doing something medical related was something I was trying to do where I was trying to get a cardiology lab to collab with us on evaluating fitness trackers. Mm -hmm. And we got real close and then they bailed. Yeah. 
That would have been super cool. That would have been cool. And that's the only way I think, personally. Uh, We'd need real scientists. Yeah. Yep. Okay, next up. Yay, women's options. I'm a robotics engineer with the new human robot interface uh, options, chat GPT, et cetera. Do you think that there will be more in-home office robots coming? Mm -hmm. Pets, companions, assistants. I'm amazed that some of those like weird like pets that, um, that you've seen out in Japan or whatever, I'm amazed that they haven't moved on rolling out a subscription-based model that interacts with chat gpt like it oh, i'm sure they're working on it that is yeah that is that is happening that's coming like a tamagotchi that actually just chats with you there is already those things it. just on your phone yeah um so how long until it comes into the physical world like i don't know how long how long is it going to take them to manufacture it like i'm sure they're working on it right I'm now i'm sure real dolls has got a team like working on this like actually though right now probably okay and last of the curated hey dl and l i moved to nice. a rural area not too long ago uh that has come with some downgrades reduced workspace and slower wi-fi have you ever downgraded on purpose that wasn't for a video oh downgraded on purpose yes yes i did i downgraded to a small form factor rig with the radeon 3870 i uh i went matx because i was moving and i was going to be in a small space and i didn't want to take a big tower with me i don't count that one as one of my cases because it was kind of like a temporary i think that's fair setup it was a whole thing. I was going through this like weird thing when we were in the lead up to getting married. And I was like, oh, I like I never like lived with a roommate. So I moved in with a friend and like a couple of his like school friends. I think I lasted like less than a month. <laughs> yeah, it was the whole thing. Anyway, don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I downgraded because I had a better GPU than would fit in like that case with like water cooling and stuff. I think I mostly just wanted to build a new computer. I can't answer this because it's going to be in an upcoming video. Nice. No Do I know about no this? No spoilers. Uh, I think technically, yes. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to I'm it. Pretty sure. Yeah. All right. We're into potentials and stuff. Whoa. <sighs> Oh, some of this has already been done. Really? Yeah. There was like asking about physical keyboards on phones. We definitely did that today. Uh, hi, I heard Linus talk a few times about the upcoming game Sea of Stars, and I've wondered if he heard about or played Chained Echoes, another awesome 16-bit style JRPG. No, I, I think that's on my list too. I'm going to start replying to some, so you guys feel free to, to pitch in with any you want to talk about. This one has a question for me. Hey, guys, been following since the NCX days. <clears throat> Crazy but awesome ride. Question for all of you, but mostly Luke. Any thoughts on what quantum computing could do with AI in the future? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> What we understand about quantum computing, coding for quantum computers, and even what AI is going to look like in uh, six months, let alone three to five years, is is a very, uh, very fog of war type situation. Um, I think it's going to be pretty wild, though. My excessively limited understanding of programming for quantum systems uh, is that it's, it's very math-based uh, and traditionally you would say like llms are not good at that because they're they have like memory issues and stuff um but with wolfram plugged into it that changed rapidly and llms are not like the only thing exists that exists in the ai space um so <laughs> who knows <laughs> i don't know eman Love your talks on AI. What's the scariest and least scary part of the future of AI, Luke? Uh, he's tired. 
Yeah. He's trying. His, I can hear his brain spinning. <laughs> Sometimes it's Okay, I'll give loud. you the easier part of their question. Would you ever consider getting a parrot? <laughs> Would same, I consider getting a parrot? Same, same merch message. Uh, a budgerar is a form of parrot. So I have one. I have two. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay, the scariest and least scary. Uh, I'm not going to answer this perfectly. I'm going to edit it slightly. Uh, I, the scariest part is the amount of disenfranchised people, the amount of displaced people, the amount of people whose lives just get completely turned upside down. I am personally feeling very sad for people that are in education right now. And if that path gets destroyed and they are not on very uh, privileged financial grounds, that could be extremely negative for their lives. And that is something that I'm concerned about. Because I was thinking about like the, the, the situation that I was in when I was back in school. If, if like this thing never happened and my path was to continue going on the school route, it looked pretty bright when I was on it. If that just disappeared, I would have been pretty screwed. I had other routes for sure. I could have followed my dad and what he was doing. I could have done other things, but uh, not everyone's kind of like that. Someone brought up AI misalignment. Like, yeah, that's a thing too. Um, there's a lot to fear about it. I, I also, however, think um, that there's so many unknowns and there's also a lot to be excited about with it. I think it is the single biggest thing that can contribute towards, uh, what's the right word for this? Like self-agency, self isn't it? Being able to be self-reliant, which is kind of weird, but you could use it and then potentially future robotic implements or whatever else to get an insane amount of stuff done as an individual. So you could become more self-reliant, you could become more self-sufficient. Does this mean you can live anywhere you want? Maybe not necessarily. You might need cheaper housing, you might need some form of land so you can grow stuff, whatever. But like the ability to get things done on your own, the ability to teach yourself, the ability to do all this other kind of stuff is going to absolutely balloon. Um, someone, yeah, headline, AI will displace 300 million jobs. That was a headline. I did read that headline as well. I don't think... <sighs> Just like with a lot of technological advancements in the past, there's been a huge amount of displaced jobs. If you don't think the internet completely wrecked entire industries, you're delusional. The internet also created a ton of jobs. Yep. This one has a huge potential to... Not replace the jobs. Yeah. So or that's replace scary. them with just like performing menial... Yes. But there's tasks. other arguments to that too. There's a huge amount of people that do that already there's a huge amount of people that show up to work there's like memes about it oh i show up to work because like the i get paid to look at reddit stuff like that there's also a huge amount of people that work really darn hard the one of the main things that seems to be getting replaced if you want to call it that by ai right now is software development right yeah yeah okay except sort of except totally not because the amount of like code that we need to improve and automate things around the world is insanely immense. And like the amount of workspaces that would benefit from having developers at them that can't not afford to have developers at all is super expensive. Like they're never gonna hire one, they can't. Yeah. Now they would be able to have that benefit and the places that can hire developers, being able to use them to, to, to guide these things. Because even if it's like better than you, okay. Well, you can still help guide it. You can direct it. A car is a lot faster than you. You can still drive it. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think just doom and glooming about it is fair. I also don't think just looking at it with positivity is fair. It's going to be extremely destructive. It's also going to be extremely constructive. And I, I, I think if you want to be ahead of the curve, the, the right approach is not to just be freaked out 100% of the time. It's to try to keep riding that wave as much as you can. While Linus, I've curated a few. While Linus uh, replies to a couple more, I've got another one here for you, Luke. Good morning to all from Malaysia. Want to ask Luke, since you can eat chicken and rice every day, <laughs> did you change the seasoning for the chicken and mm -hmm. any substitute for rice? 
uh, quinoa. <laughs> um, changing the seasoning has to be <laughs> Uh, decently often sure but if i'm being completely honest probably 90 percent of the time it's frank's red extra hot <laughs> i don't seem to get tired of that so it is what it is um uh, yeah i've started trying to get more uh like beef and fish incorporated to try to mix things up a little bit just because it's probably not like good for you to only eat that all the time but yeah, veggies, chicken, and rice is still a vast majority of it. So I got weight to lose, man. I'm 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 like I've come pretty far, but I still have a long way to go. It is what it is. I don't think I'll be at what I will personally be happy with for for a bit now, over a year, and that's fine. I'm on the path. It's going okay. You can feel free to start hitting me with them. I'm down to just a few, Den. Okay, excellent. Um, hi, Linus. Are you planning to upgrade your framework to Intel 13th Gen or Ryzen? I've got an 11th Gen and pre-ordered Ryzen 7. So uh, Framework actually reached out to me about that today. <laughs> they were like, hey, so we did that video where you talked about the upcoming launch, but are you going to cover the new stuff at all? And I was kind of sitting there going, oh, I hadn't actually really thought about it. Uh, my intention was to wait for Ryzen, but 13th gen is also pretty interesting and could be an opportunity to do a completely different kind of video. So there's that Cooler Master case that's designed to take your old framework, uh, your old framework motherboard. So I was kind of thinking it would be really cool. I got it. Oh, I got to go. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it would be really cool to do a video where the main focus is actually on building that, that Cooler Master gaming rig. Maybe when we do the LTX Whale LAN, I build the framework gaming PC. So it's just my 12th gen framework motherboard in the Cooler Master case with an external GPU or something like that. And I take it, I do all my LAN gaming on just this like tiny framework laptop motherboard. I think that'd be super cool. And then as part of that, well, I guess I'll have to have a motherboard to put into my computer. So I'll get the 13th gen one, I'll put it in there. But what the one that I'm really excited for is the Ryzen one. Man, AMD's current Zen 4, they, Zen 4 is so freaking efficient. And um, if, I, if I don't end up doing the video with the Cooler Master case, then I'm just going to wait, and I think I'm going to upgrade to Zen 4. I don't think I'm going to go to the Framework 16. I just don't think I want to carry around a 16-inch laptop ever again, no matter how cool and sexy it is. But I'll be, I'll be really happy with the... I'm really happy with the upgrades they keep providing for the Framework 13. So who knows? I might do one, might do both. We'll see how it goes. Okay, next up. What was the most annoying bugs from the early days of developing Floatplane? Something that was hard to patch and was frustrating for users, but not necessarily harmful to them. I have a kind of an answer for this, but I'll see if Luke yeah, has no, something. No, go for it. Oh, okay. Um, it wasn't necessarily harmful to users, but we had a lot of issues with payments in the early oh, days. Yeah. Back when it was running on the forum. And I think Luke <sighs> will probably remember some of the specific bugs but we would have people try to buy a subscription and it just wouldn't bill them. Wouldn't we would have people try to buy a subscription and it would double bill them. And like we could do we could do a certain amount of things with the forum, but the payments portion was closed code. So like I we could not fix them. That was very frustrating. We've obviously had our, our fair share of bugs. We've been in production 100% of the existence of the platform. <laughs> that's like, that's something I can say of uh, for pretty much no one. Um, and it's it's been a rocky road at times, but in general we do pretty good. But yeah, we've had our fair amount of bugs, but that that was extremely frustrating because the team has never shied away from squashing bugs and we've been able to fix things generally, but we couldn't fix that. That was actually a big part of the reason why we wanted to move to an external site at all, was just the payments being so impossible to fix. Yeah. Someone just asked me yeah. what acoust about using acoustic cameras in the lab. Do you know what an acoustic camera is? Acoustic camera. Isn't that a microphone? I guess not. Um, no, 
but I made a note for myself to follow it up with Gary and see if see if that's something that would be what useful. What? Yeah, acoustic cameras. I don't I don't know, man. Uh, it's one of the incoming merch messages. I'm just gonna have to show that. All right, Dan, what do you got? Portable acoustic camera. What is this? Oh, they're gonna nerd out about it. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I forgot to archive that one. Okay. Uh, hello. Apple launches their devices almost at the same time worldwide. Why do other big companies like Samsung uh, not do that? Uh, for example, the Galaxy S23 is not available in Japan even now, but the yellow iPhone is. It's really hard. I don't know what to tell you other than that everything from the localization of the product to the uh, producing enough to sustain a launch. Because, like, think about it. If Valve had launched the Steam Deck globally, right out of the gate, all they would have accomplished is that everyone would have been mad that it's backordered. <laughs> right? If they can't produce enough of them for one region or two regions, what is the point of opening up orders to the entire world? It's tough. It's really, really hard. Um, I think that was that was basically I think that was basically going to be my answer. Apple is an incredible logistics company. Unbelievable. The fact that they launch a new iPhone every year, come hell or high water, is a modern miracle. And their shareholders love it, and their users love it, and they're really good at that. There's some things I don't like about Apple, but their their global logistics management is absolutely not one of them. Have you figured out what an acoustic camera is? Uh, I figured out that they exist. Um, I don't think they're actual cameras. I mean, oh, so it's like arrays a arrays of microphones that that. So it's a directional like microphone. I think so. Like it's computational and it figures out where. You know, I have a weird ticking in my house. Maybe an acoustic camera could be the solution. Maybe. I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from, because I don't have any clocks. So what's ticking? Could be a bomb. <laughs> It might be two. That's true. You're right. Two bombs. That would be worse. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot of the the sites that I try to jump to have very aggressive. Wow, that's uh, that is aggressive. Things. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like, oh my what? god, he can see my screen. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they they look really interesting. I've just never heard of them before. Okay, next up. Hi, Luke and Linus. How do you think Microsoft should compensate writers for the web pages that Bing Chat is oh. accessing? Because if people aren't seeing ads to support those websites, they might disappear. This is a huge problem. Age-old um, problem. As old as the internet. Yeah, but it, just like with all AI things, this just like blows it up to such a ridiculous degree that it's like, oh, wow, we actually really need to address this now. I mean, it was already a big problem. You Google search something and they have like kind of the answer and you could click through to the website, but you won't because the answer is already there. Yep. This is that like roided oh, out so hard. Steroids. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually crazy. Um, and it's an interesting topic for us because we're building the labs website, which like the way that it's being built so far is very beneficial to one of these systems just taking everything from it. Um, so it's rough, man. I don't know. It, there's there's this whole problem where like if if these AI systems continue to work how they currently do, yeah. and then everyone starts to use them for everything, all well, these companies that generate the data are going to disappear, and then the AI systems aren't going to have anything to lean on for having the data but big tech has shown that they're willing to just consume oh, yeah. everything like a swarm of locusts in their path yep and they don't want to compensate say for example journalists yeah. for doing the actual primary sourcing of news um yeah no yeah, it's gonna be a big problem it's gonna be a huge problem yeah the creators of information potentially vanishing um is a bit of an issue for the system that utilizes that information but does that mean that the system that utilizes that information is going to want to compensate them? Probably no. So is it going to eat itself? Ouroboros AI. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion. Okay, next up. Hey, Luke. 
Can you tell a story of what happened to that red car that got you <clears throat> stuck on a bridge that one time? Sorry if you've already answered this before. Love the show. Can I tell the story? Um, the, the fuel pumps blew up on a bridge. Um, Sick. <laughs> and I was in like the middle lane of the bridge and the car just died. Like it wasn't like, oh, it's sputtering for a while and I can do whatever. I can pull over. Like, no, it just, it just died immediately. Um, I was on the uphill <laughs> of the bridge. So Excuse I me. I uh, uh, I called Linus because I was too cheap, and I knew he had BCAA, so he could get my car taken out of there. That's triple AA for you, my American friends. Yeah. Um, so I called him, and he he came and saved me, but also roasted me in classic Linus fashion. I was uh, flattered that you called me instead of your parents. Now I know it was just about the money. Got it. <laughs> Um, he was also calling to say he was going to be late for work. <laughs> that too. Yeah, I was on my way to work. Um, and then, yeah, I stood in the back of the convertible and flagged traffic, um, which a local radio show thought was quite funny, but actually did totally work. Yeah, like it was very helpful. Uh, he saw it. it. It Traffic kept flowing like quite effectively. Um, the police came by and were like not 100% stoked about me standing in my car to direct traffic but they were also like at the same time usually this would like stop bridge traffic and it's flowing just fine so like we're not going to necessarily tell you to stop <laughs> and then they just took off which was interesting um but yeah i mean that's about it once once i got it to a mechanic i was basically told like this is extremely not worth repairing yeah uh, because there and i knew this there was a lot wrong with it other than just the the fuel pumps there was like a very considerable amount wrong with it. Um, cough, cough, zero of the gauges in the car worked. Um, <laughs> oh, no, the tack worked. Nothing else worked except for the tack. Um, but it, it was old and it was kind of fairly poorly maintained and stuff. So it was its time. And that's it. Sounds like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next up is, uh, well, the last one we have today is from Nicholas. Uh, hey guys, excited for the ABCs of gaming for my baby on the way. Nice. So I love tinkering with my home server and 3D printers. Is there any tech that keeps coming back over and over to tinker with as a hobby? Water cooling. It's totally stupid and no one should use it. But I have a water cooled computer because I'm just a big idiot. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I can't stop, Luke. <laughs> I just always have a water cooled computer. I, I don't even overclock. For real. Yeah. I get no, it's in a completely separate room. It doesn't have to be quiet. <laughs> isn't it not even quiet in that room that it's in? Is it quiet? I don't know. Well, the room isn't quiet. The yeah. computer's quiet, sure. But like the room it isn't, it matter, doesn't matter. Because it's a loud room. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> is, is, this, is this purely because you want to water cool? Or is, uh, how much of it is the channel and content? I'd probably do it anyway. Yeah. Because I did it before. Yep. I just, I don't know. I just, I have a water-cooled computer. I, I, I water-cool my computer because I'm a big idiot. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. How about you? I don't know. Mineral oil. But it's like not, though. Yeah, but where's the update? Oh. It's like kind of somewhat impossible to tell if it's okay or not. Ah, uh, okay. Well, um, that's tough then. They're like pretty sure it is okay, and they have pretty good reasons for it. Okay. I mean, that's good. Right. But they can't like be 100% sure. Well, what if we just found a way to like pretty much seal it, probably? So we seal in the top better. My other concern is maybe if I move, I'd be more open to it because mm. of leaks. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, well, I yeah. can wait. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the eventually scale. I am a hundred percent down. Nice. There's a reason I still have those cases. I want to do it. Let's do it. I'm in. Okay. All right. I'm just not a hundred percent in this second. I don't know that this is the right time. But those cases are going nowhere. All right. And I'm down. Okay. And okay. even if those cases like end up not working, like I'm down to find a way. I I have wanted to get back into oil cooling. Because I'm big dumb idiot, just like your water cooling nice. thing. It just hasn't been the right time for a while. Um, so what would you pick as something that you do keep going back to? 
well, I mean, honestly, probably that. I just haven't been able to because of living situation. For we'll a make bit. it happen. I've wanted to for a long time, though. I There's a bunch of different build ideas I have for it. I've wanted a home theater one for a while just because I think it would look sick in like a home theater setup. I also have always had this idea. I'm pretty sure I even talked to you about it. And there's probably 47 reasons why this is really stupid and wouldn't work. But I've wanted to do a like nested tank system where there's two tanks. The outside tank is an actual fish tank with actual fish. Hey, guess who has some, uh, something that can make that dream a reality? So sick. I've been meaning to try and donate my fish tank to the company. Um, oh, this is this oh, would yeah. take an obsessive, like, way too much work. Oh, no, it could be done. So all we need is, like, we need a really good temperature control system for the fish tank because you don't want to cook them. Yes. Or, or let them that die. Is, that is, And the opinion, load the of the biggest... computer is fluctuating. Yeah. So what you would need is just, I, I think if you could just create like a, like a relay system on some kind of Peltier heating cooling thing, as long as it was powerful enough. <laughs> to like deal with fluctuations? Because you don't want to just, uh, there's, there's, I, I'm pretty sure it's super bad for the fish, for the temperature to just do this all the time. Mm, so okay, so that's tough. It's going to have to be pretty good. Yes, but if you have a large enough amount of water, then that shouldn't matter that much. The way that I was kind of thinking of doing it mm -hmm. um, was making sure that the, I don't know how fluctuating, whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know much about tropical fish. I had non-tropical fish. I don't know much about tropical fish. Okay. Um, but making sure that the heating system was always pushing towards a minimum and making sure that the computer could not push it past that by mm -hmm. itself so the heating system is always going to have to be on, but it's on to a varying degree. I think that might be more effective. And then the other uh, thing that I was going to bring up is leaks. Because mm -hmm. the fluid going into the water would be an extreme issue. Someone brought up some solution for that. I don't remember what it was. I think it was an air gap between the two. So it's not like one one tank and then another tank in it. It's it's almost like three. Mm -hmm. Um because the outer tank would ha actually have to like seal and then there would be a gap between. Um, doing that, I think you might have issues with like uh, like fog. Yeah, I think it could be done. It's maybe, the idea has been floating there in the back of my head. It's gotta be doable. What was the exact question? Was it tech ideas or was it general Something ideas? you tinker with that you just kind of always come back to. I think it was tech. Okay. If it's tech, then yeah, that's my answer. All right. And my answer is Oops, thank you over. very much yeah. for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. How is it that your gamer bladder is so strong that you can sit here through the entire show and I have to go to the bathroom twice? Never surrender. Mind you, I, I drank all of this. Yeah. I, I didn't drink all of this. Okay. Uh, I might be part of it. But it is pretty strong. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Say the line, Bart. Bye!